Petty comic people, how you done? Uh, Arrow will be back shortly. <laughs> Come start. Hey guys, uh, Malfunction here with Rico um, discussing comics again. Uh, Rico did a um, poll this week, and turns out people want to discuss more, more interactions, more there. interaction, and uh, more comics related. So. What, we, what we've got going is I've got a computer set up for all your comments. We're going to read that out and answer the questions. Um, and on that poll, you had something else? Yeah, so we've um, been planning on doing some prize packs. So I've got everyone's names down behind me. And then the idea is we're going to pick out five and then pull them off, call them out on here. I'll also kind mm -hmm. of put you up on the feed so you know who you are and you just let me know your address and things and we'll get you sorted out with some comics excellent and thanks for letting us know what you're looking for yeah uh, i mean it helps us out um get um get organized and what to talk about and stuff and um yeah what to discuss i particularly enjoyed the cosplay babes and i look forward to being able to get there i mean it might have to be pictures <laughs> initially but if we can get someone behind us or in the middle here all for it cosplay babes <laughs> there was one of the ones it was a, it was a request and it's a legit request who wouldn't like a cosplay babe? Hey, we've been, like, 24 minutes ago, we've been weird. We've been rocking the boat. How's that happening? Hello, viewer number one. Hopefully you did a um, comment on the poll, because uh, you know, yeah. we'll start drawing soon. I'm just going to share across the... So, yeah, so I'm going to have the comments open for whatever, you know, what you guys um, want to talk about, um, discuss with us, and let's hit it. Yeah, I've got a few followers on. I was quickly sharing, so I apologize if I'm being rude. Um, let's have a look. Share to group. There we go. Bam. Okay. All right. Let's focus. See my um my um my Facebook one on the laptops got a bit of delay on there. So if it's um uh, yeah if it's um if I'm looking over there going wait we're a bit of a delay. Please excuse me. All right. So let's hit this off. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's talk about Twitter. Twitter is always. Uh, Kind of like a cesspool, and sometimes it can be a really good thing. And I find it both, right? So you can you can find the negative side of Twitter, and you can see the good side of Twitter. And personally, I see, and but I like to be in the between uh, because there's a lot of politics when it comes to comic books on Twitter, and there's always going to be political stuff. Is that just because it's kind of unfiltered? Is that yeah? How it gets kind of down and dirty. Yeah, and I think a lot of people just think that well, you know. You can be anonymous and have an icon and you can say whatever you want and it's and you feel protected by that anonymity I opinion i just start a live yeah and put my opinion there yeah so <laughs> i i tend to put my face out every now and then to let people know that hey i'm a real person even though i use a pseudonym Is yeah, well, yeah. We don't wear a mask right I, i'd like to I, yeah, I, actually thought, get some I actually thought about that, like just be a like an alter ego and be this really sort of brash villain character for that for a whole live stream where you just we just remark on everything opposite to what you actually think, you know, just like a cynical thing on every single topic. You go, well, you know, I hate comics. Tell me why I should like comics. That's sort of say, you know, stuff. Like it. So comments, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> so so the Twitter thing, right? Okay. So. As um, if you're not aware, uh, Jim Lee is now uh, in charge of the imprint for um, at uh, sorry, is in charge of um, publishing, head of publishing whatever at um, so the big the big And now he's the top dog. Yeah, so he used to be co um, co publisher with Dan Didio. Dan Didio got fired for the five G debacle, right? As we mentioned last week, he he tried to um, kick uh, kiss butt, and they. The, his bosses, AT and T, Warner's don't like it, so they said, "There's a door. Please see you later. No goodbyes. Just get out." And so Jim Lee announced last week with ECC, was it uh, Emerald City? I think it was. Might have oh, been. Yeah, maybe, yeah. And big he announced news. that, um, yeah, that he announced that um, uh, he's the big honcho and such on. And the other thing um, he did was he got in Sean Gordon Murphy, as I mentioned last week. Uh, this is Sean Gordon's artwork here. On Tokyo Ghost, he's been an uh, kind of like an amazing outside uh, of um, of the mainstream, but also the mainstream, as you know, Image is the mainstream. And as much as Image likes to say that they're the they're like the um, independent, 
they're not really independent anymore because they, they make a lot of comics and they're in the mainstream. They have a lot of um, a lot of their work that are t turned into movies and TV shows, uh, which um, you know, and such so, so, such as Dark Horse as well. Uh, we're going to uh, we're going to talk about Umbrella Academy. Is of course you've probably seen that already on Netflix. It was Netflix? Yes. Netflix. Yeah. So it was Netflix, and so you know even Dark Horse wouldn't they're a main, um, mainstream as well. So that, there's 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 about five big huge companies that are actually in the might even be a bit more. They're in the mainstream, but they a couple of them like to play that they're independent because it allows them to say and do things that well, mainstream doesn't. I think Image has been about the people, though. So they had yeah. some runaway successes, but they're supporting right. the public. Similar right. to what you're planning on doing. So the plunge, you know, you're, you're planning on supporting the little guy, getting messages out there. Right. Some of them are successful, but that balances out, and they might become the corporate enemy that they don't want to be, but that's mm. what pays for the, the little fellas to have a chance. I think it's a, a good thing. And that's cool, because I'm talking about that. Um, you've got, like, Todd McFarlane, and you've got um, Rob Liefeld. Rob Liefeld is going to Patreon, right? So this is a biggie because a lot of um, a lot of um, the top pros have been like poo pooing, like uh, independent creators, uh, people who just decide, well, I'm going to leave the mainstream and do my own thing, right? Like uh, Tucci, is it Stanley Tucci or who's the guy? Oh yeah, uh, and um, you know, like um, Ethan Van Skyver, a whole bunch of people that just. You know, they just, just jump off and go do their own thing because they can't, um, they're not really part of the mainstream anymore. Or they decide they don't want to be part of the mainstream because they don't like what's going on in them. And there is a lot of junk that's going on in the mainstream, as I'm about to tell you in a minute, uh, regarding Jim Lee and Sean Gordon Murphy. Um, now, with Rob Liefeld, with him going to, um, he announced it yesterday, or might have been early this morning in our time, but of course, um, late last night at their time. I guess um, that he's going to Patreon and he's going to teach people how and what he does when it comes to writing comics. So he's going to be basically running sort of like a comic school on Patreon. Uh, mm -hmm. And this is kind of interesting because, as you know, Patreon's where people actually pay you money for um, what is it? Um, special special things. You know, like you might um, they might pay you to support your monthly basis uh, for a stipend. Mm -hmm. Or, um, or they might pay you for an art piece that you yeah, want to do. That's interesting. It is a good thing. Yeah. And um, I mean, I tried that last year a couple of times uh, when I was doing the radio show. I found that I couldn't keep up to it. And because there's so many different um, services, website services like Patreon, mm -hmm. or like YouTube, um, and you've got another, um, there's, um, of course, there's Deviant Art has been around for what, 15 yeah. years, yeah, a long I mean, time. They're different yeah. kind of platforms. Yeah. Like Patreon, like uh, the thing is, it's like you you kind of t you need someone to help fuel your passion to create mm, mm. or your talent or help educate you. Like I don't understand why a successful dude who's made millions would need to be on Patreon. That's it, and that's just the weird thing. I thought like it's like what is going on, and what really for me, what, um, putting on my cynic mask, is that I think that they're realizing that the ship is sinking. Right, the mainstream mainstream things sh um, sinking. They're finding that they're getting attacked by their own friends, and here's what I'm, like this is where we come back to Jim Lee and uh, Sean Gordon, Gordon Murphy. Uh, here's one of the covers, for the original first cover. I think this might have been the variant for um, for Tokyo Ghost that came out in 2015. I love. I bought two of these covers, one for another person, and one for myself. This is the cover B. Uh, cover A was quite interesting, but um, so yeah, so. Sean Gordon Murphy got brought in as Bull White Knight to do Batman and um, Batwoman, Bat, uh, Batgirl uh, comics and, uh, you know, run the imprint sort of like a, like an Elseworlds thing. You remember Elseworlds? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, Elseworlds is such an amazing thing. And, of course, uh, Red Sun came out. Have you seen it yet? Yeah, well, I mean, Elseworlds, I, Red Sun was what made me think of it. But yeah. What If is always, I, I guess I've just been a Marvel guy when I was younger. What If was my Elseworlds, and that was all I needed. <laughs> yeah, I loved that when I was growing up. I mean, like, in my teens growing up, and it was like freaking two decades ago, right? Um, and so, um, but, so the whole idea is for him to do a sort of like a more, mature take on that i guess but as soon as he was announced um one person who was quite jealous it seems basically started attacking him over his um 
you know, even before he came to DC, this is the weird thing. It's like, this is like his past. And this is like, he only, you know, a couple of months ago, he, uh, he was approached by another person to say, Hey, look, can you do a variant cover? And here's the thing. It's a, it's a freelance job paid for thing. So I go, Hey, give me a cover and I'll, you know, and you'll get money for that cover. Cool. Done deal. He, he gets, uh, gets to go work for Jim Lee, um, for, you know, for DC. And next thing you know, he gets told, Oh dude, you're, you're, you know, uh, you're supporting someone who did this. It's like, you know, rather than saying, Hey, it's a piece of work that I do for someone. Mm. And this is what happens a lot of times. Like you could do anything for anybody. What if somebody buys your work and you don't even know who they are, but they bought your work. So what you're going to do now, you're going to retro, retro, uh, retrospectively go in and say, no, give my artwork back. You, know, I mean, back. you don't really have the choice of choosing yeah. who your buyer is or who's, yeah. who's hiring you. I'm sure a lot of scumbags hire people. All the time. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm sure a lot of them do. I mean, I guess it's, it's not your right to police that. Yeah, and I think that's that's kind of a weird thing. So basically, he had to go. Well, I'm going to apologize. I'm going to take that off. It's not going to happen. And so these guys were friends. So he threw his friend under the bus. Now, once he did that, next thing another thing got pulled. A female then pulled. But what about this person? You're going to work with for on. I think it was for Batwoman. Uh, no, sorry, Batgirl. So he's going to do the artwork. Uh, cover or art of work for a miniseries for this other female who's working at DC Comics. Oh, uh, but now she's a bad person as well. So the bus doesn't stop. Once you start getting on the, you know, the train doesn't stop. Crazy right? train. Yeah, once you get on the crazy train, Ozzy Osbourne, it doesn't <laughs> stop, right? All aboard because it just keeps rolling on. Hey guys, um, let me just check if we've got any comments. Well, we got a couple more people up. Let's um, get commenting. Yeah, ask us questions. Um, to keep it, we keep can it do the draw while you guys are here viewing. Um, yeah. So we're going to select five. I've written everyone's mm -hmm. names on upside down post-its. And Arrow doesn't, hasn't had anything to do with this. So I'm going to let him pull them off. And each person we select will mm -hmm. get a little comic care package. Um, so I'll put it on a little message and highlight you guys so you can know. And you just message me your address. I'll send something out. So without further ado... Who we got there? Oh, Chantel. Chantel um, Olivier. Um, we're going to send a comic care package out to you. Um, I was just hanging out with her on the weekend, so I did not choose that. Um, all right. Boy, he's going hard. Hard and fast. Here we go. Acorn Ellison. Number two. Thank you um, for commenting and taking part in the, the poll and uh, being part of the community. That's all this is, really. It's just a yeah. thank you to you guys who just experience things and put stuff out there and if you're outside of Whangarei outside of Northland don't forget we got uh we got plunge coming up in July it's far away um so it's not going to be affected by the big C uh the current big C so hopefully it won't be affected otherwise hey if the situation comes up we're going to play the game and cancel it or postpone it to another time no big deal um so yeah but please if you're outside of Whangarei come and support us um Especially if you go to Redcon in April. Yeah, well, heaps of... Most of New Zealand Comics and Glades is in Auckland, to be fair. Yeah, but we're all over the... Yeah, I made this. I screen printed this a long time ago. Cool. Uh, I like the old design. It probably needs a rejig. as like self-screen printed. Anyway, keep on drawing. Talking about which, I might get you to look... Uh, how do you do that? Like, I mean... I can show you. Um, <laughs> have, you got, have you got a set up to yeah, do I that? Yeah, I've got the screen. Oh, you, you call it out. All right, this is Daniel Cohen. Well done, buddy. All right. Comic care package All right number three although i might just send you battle cat instead battle i cat. know you like your toys awesome all right so is that we're going to we'll do, do five are you going to do all five i mean well, five well might as well why, why hold it out for longer uh, actually let's leave let's leave the last one for later seven medicine so swind 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 although yeah we're hey, that's german isn't it yes we had a friend uh, from germany who follows us still on, uh, on like this is from like about five years ago who actually commented a couple of weeks ago on um on our comic track page he's come and play Yu-Gi-Oh and yeah he's to hang out and play D&D &D. he was he was here for a year as exchange student I, I'm not sure if he's exchange student or on, uh, no he was on holiday so we had so much fun with him and he was such a great character so Sven hey man hello yeah it'd be nice to meet you one day like I, yeah. I know most people in some regard of yeah. course it's impossible to know everyone but He's gone back to Germany. Hopefully, he'll, he'll decide to come back again. Because 
that's the thing about like um, New Zealand is like you can t we're quite like uh, economically our our currency rate compared to other countries you can almost double the three times a euro is what four times or three times New Zealand. Oof, I don't, I'm, I'm not sure. It seems yeah, a bit like it's one point one point five is uh, American, and even more now because our dollar to um, sixty cents sixty right. cents now. So we're quite low. So American dollar is quite big, but of course th there's a travel ban on, and you know, if you're still if you're in Europe, just just hang out at home for a little bit longer. There was a bit you of know, talk on the group about the uh, post from the states. And yeah, the I was gonna, I was gonna ask about that. So, yeah. do you want to talk about that? Well, I don't know. I mean, at the moment, I mean, what are we looking at? You know, six percent, seven percent shift. Yeah. Uh, over a year. So, I mean, even though there is some effects there, and probably you know delays and shift, mm. uh, I don't think it has to affect your collecting. Like a lot of you know, I got big stacks over in the states, and mm. you know if they have to wait there a little bit longer, that's good for me. Yeah, I mean, what's <laughs> the rush, right? I mean, because well, if, especially if you're buying classic comics, they probably right. gain value in the time you pay, you got them waiting mm. for the coronavirus to clear. <laughs> so um, okay, so what what we mentioned Patreon. So next up on the Patreon list is the fact that they're looking at um, censoring censoring anime and this is a quite a big deal now like i mentioned on um uh, on on our page last week about how aussie was the senator and aussie was going to try to censor all anime regardless of uh the age or the um, or the you know which age group it's for if it's for adults it's for um don't censor my anime yeah don't censor my anime, seriously um but, and you know and so what happens is a lot of times there's a knee-jerk reaction to something that somebody sees without understanding the whole thing, right? They were going to censor some, uh, some character on Amazon who was an 18-year-old 18, 18 character. But, of course, anime has, has a real um, cartoony look to it. That's edgy. Yeah, yeah, a lot of them look youthful. Yeah, yeah true. and the cartoony look to it. And so because they have a cartoony look to it, people think that's... That's it's a twelve-year-old. Yeah, it's a twelve-year-old, right, or a six-year-old, and so not no not actually ex, uh, ex, expanding your brain on what 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 the whole uh, anime um, arena is about. The art form itself, people tend to just have an eject reaction. I know members of my family go, "Well, anime is all crap." Or oh, no, sorry, not crap. That it's got it's got, they're all sort of the same thing. All mangas are all sort of thing. It's like, and I'm not going. Yeah, no, it's not really because you can watch Dragon Ball Z, be a, a thirteen-year-old enjoy that, or you can be a thirty-year-old enjoy that, right? Mm. And I've never seen Dragon Ball Z, and I've got nothing against it, but it's not for me. I don't, I'm not into that sort of style. But I will watch something else. Like I was, um, I posted yesterday, um, or today, early this morning about uh, uh, Island of Giant Insects. It sounds good, right? It's it's really it's a really interesting uh, anime because I saw the twenty minute um, short of it, where uh, you're actually learning about insects. This is a, this is a weird thing, and one of the lead characters basically yeah. someone who was scared as a child of insects. How big are the insects? They're huge, like giant. How big is an ant? Yeah, like the, like huge, like that. Like probably the, the, size. the size of a junk. The, the, the size of a ridiculous. The size of a room. Thing. Yeah. They can basically carry a person away, so it's a, it's a <laughs> horror, a right? So, <laughs> whereas uh, Dragon Ball is Z is what a fantasy fighting uh, kung fu style thing, whereas this is the well, Dragon Ball Z is in a sense of sci-fi, right? So whereas this one goes the other way, where it's like uh, it's a horror sh a horror um, manga anime, where you know people are stuck on an island, and it's horror in the sense they get eaten up by an, um you know by wasp and stuff and you know and you learn about what wasps how wasps behave you know they lay larvae in you and suddenly the larvae you know pops out and stuff and also they numb you so you, you know they mm -hmm. numb their victims so that the victims don't feel anything insects so are they, fascinating yeah. there's a million different ways they do for sure hmm. right. um, and the other one was uh i think it was dr rock or something like that which i found really interesting it teaches about how to survive in a post uh, nuclear world where how do you sort of come back from not having any technology and it's it's kind of like this is the education side of anime I right think I, I think you see that in a lot of things mm. some clever storylines like there was a comic about the sun getting to like a 
red dwarf or a white a red giant stage yeah. and the guy was in like a suit and he had to come out of the sewers at, at certain times because yeah. otherwise even in the suit he'd melt and he has to try and find water and shit mm. uh, those are fascinating concepts but that's the cool thing about it right like it's like it's got, it's, other, it's, 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 got it's more than just a, a kid in their underwear or someone yeah. pissing themselves or whatever it is or and this, this some is, yeah, ambiguous and, kind of neo rape scenes yeah, and this is what the confusion is. The confusion is that somebody saw the tentacle thing <laughs> at one time. <laughs> and it's like, that is it. That defines the yeah, entire... Don't the tentacle things to yeah, churches. I just, yeah, but I mean, it's not even just churches. It's it's like, it doesn't even mainstream yeah, well, people. I mean, you can see how it's offensive. Yeah. But that's one of the beautiful things about creating is because, hmm. say you wanted to do something in anime, and they've got less senses than us, and you yeah. go, fuck it, I'm just going to go to a primary school and mow them all down and have some storyline around that. But yeah. I'm just going to do it, and it's a cartoon, and so why the hell can't I? You know, these big, goofy, like, happy eyes and whatnot. Yeah. Like, you can, and you but should be able to. But that's not only anime, though. There's, there's, a, there's a comic book written by Mike. it's less common the more Western you go. So, I mean, yeah. on that style, they are a little bit more edgy. Mm. And it's good that they have that outlet. Why? It doesn't mean that they go and do it. It doesn't yeah. mean they agree with it. Maybe the story is anti-that. But they're just exactly. making a loud, bout, bold message, yeah. and it's powerful, or it might even be entertaining. But who cares? They're doing it for entertainment. Maybe there's a le lesson to be learned. But it's an outlet, right? Yeah, I, and, I think it's fully and an I outlet. Think entertainment outlet, and I think the confusion is that, like, because it's there, this is what people are thinking. This is what they're going to do, mm. and that's that's been that's been about music as well. Yeah, comics, music. Yeah, it's it's just like it's like if you're listening to heavy metal. Yeah, if, yeah, exactly. So if you if you're listening to heavy metal, you're you're devil worshiper and you're going to mm. murder people, and and or if you're hip hop, you're just going to mow people down and stuff. And it's just it's been the people use have used art for so many um, censoring things. So they always start small and. Um, you know, they'll start with like say, oh well, because it's this thing, and they'll start with that slowly. And next thing you know, you're living in a grey world with no art, and that's what that's, that's what communism really is that's, for me. It's interesting, but in a trouble, sense, right? I think that world it's got us positives too. It, mm. I I feel that kind of world would be safe. Mm. Like you know, if you kind of try and steer away from it, it's a very negative message, and we don't agree yeah. with this, and we don't want that. I mean, I don't want to live in that world, but yeah. it does feel to me like, I mean, it could be a safe... It could be like machines, and, right? Yeah, in a sense. Like, uh, like soulless machines and nothing. It kind of stifles your your freedom to think, but not everyone right. needs that. And I mean, as mm. far as lifestyle, mm. I don't think it would be, t again, an interesting kind of story motif. Yeah. Like... Uh, and that's the joy of being, um, being creative. Uh, it's like you, you're able to bring color into other people's life and being, um, entertain people. And talking about entertainment, James Bond, right? So they were talking about how James Bond is going to be delayed because of coronavirus. But they did testings on the first um, first edits of the film, and it was crap. Maybe the film's the coronavirus. Yeah, possible. Steer clear. <laughs> yeah, well, that's where they're getting to. So, so basically, um, um, Daniel Craig came out and basically said, it's about Trump, it's about Brexit, and it's like, so you showed it to people and people went, this isn't James Bond and we're not going to watch it. So they had to go do reshoots. But then they used the coronavirus as an excuse. So the first ones to use the excuse of that. Ah, oh, so it's like, uh, well, let's go back to the drawing boards because it was yeah. a flop. Exactly. What's so, I mean, and this, and this is what happens with a lot of times with films. It's like, you, they always... Try to be too political. Right. At the moment, it's all about politics and movies and they, then they complain about why it's failing as well as... They, they answer their own question, well, we've been political, and nobody wants to work political, because the world is full of politics, and we want to go be entertained, right? You know something funny, though, is like, if they made an action movie like The Expendables, but like, maybe like Last Action Hero, or even yeah. The Terminator, and they put the tr Trump in it, yeah. just for pure comedy, yeah. millions of people would go watch it, even yeah. though they hate him. Yeah, they, they'd love it. Is, like if he was throwing yeah. out one-liners and mowing down yeah. like terrorists and stuff, I'd go and watch it. Yeah. That's and the thing. I, about it wouldn't be political. Though, it? I'd, I'd purely enjoy it. Yeah, and, and it could it could be trying to take itself seriously even. Yeah, <laughs> and it would be crack up. And I mean, comedy is basically what we need right now because I think there's a lot of um, soulless things happening in the world right now that um you know because everybody's trying to be political in their message, but we're not seeing enough comedy. Right? We're not seeing enough uh, funny films come out. And this is, if you look at the last 12 months, there hasn't been anything funny, really. Sonic was funny. Sonic, Sonic was, um, 
Jim, so, Jim Carrey to live it. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, that's the only one that sticks out, right? Yeah, and I'm 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 trying really hard to replace. Yeah. There's been good stuff on Netflix and stuff. Yeah. So I mean, there's some kind of, but it's it quite should a stick in, it should stick in it your should. head. You should be able to go. Yes, this is Dave Chappelle comedy. There's some clever stuff. Like often they try and put in some modern messages, mm. and they're not terrible. They've written good stories around them, especially on Netflix and streaming. Like, yeah. but I should have more things popping to mind. Yeah. I got the good place. Good place was really good. Yeah, good place was really good, and then they the last season sucked. But if, I, mean, I, I I just what, what I, show can keep on you know, the momentum yeah. at least it moved around. But, they but it was like it was suddenly they were, they just like jackknifed into something else or t-boned into something else. They were like, I was I was telling people to watch it. I was telling my family members to watch it. and They really enjoyed it. And then came season three, and I was like, I wish I hadn't told you. But at least you got to enjoy the first two seasons because <laughs> season three sucked. It's a bit of like um, um, why I stopped watching uh, Big Bang Theory, right? It, it got to a point where it was like they never grew up. Like but they did that. I yeah. I didn't like it for the opposite reason. I yeah. felt they grew up too much, and I was like, I'll come back to like season one, please. Yeah. Like, well, but I mean, that's what I mean because I season one like is funny. I still like them, but they yeah. just were like, oh, we're married now. Oh, we're doing this now. Yeah, and it wasn't bad, but mm. you know, I I didn't mind if they were in a time loop. Personally, they could just stay young forever. So I stopped good. around about season five. I think it was around that or season six or something, where basically. My, personally, I like Raj, right? Mm -hmm. I like the Raj character, but he never, never changed. And um, he got his voice, and he could talk to women. Yeah, but it was like he, his his accent never changed. He kept playing the whole friggin' off fresh off a boat thing, and that's I don't a little, like that. That's a little bit racist. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, yeah. But the thing is that over time, people's characters change, their um, their accents change. They get off the whole. Waving your head around, you know the the actual stereotypical characters. Oh, I don't know, but in a comedy, you kind of got to play your your trope a bit more, you know. Like if you're the goofy like guy who's years. a plumber and is like a yeah. bit Gumby Kramer, like if Kramer suddenly stopped being Kramer, although he probably could have. Yeah. Like you'd be like, oh my god, but why that... is he not shoving his head through the door and going, ooh? <laughs> like it's true, right? It is true, but I I just found it like it just became to a point where it was like, uh, come on, dude. But anyway. On so, a positive, how about Dragon Prince on Netflix? Haven't seen it. I recommended it to a friend. Like at first, I looked at it in like the uh, animated three um, yeah, D movie yeah. about um, like rival kingdoms kind of thing. They they're hating the dragons and fairy folk okay. um, and elves. Really cool. Like I, yeah. I watched it a while ago, and season two came out probably months and months ago. Mm. But I, when it came out, I jumped right on it and got into it. Beginning to end of that show was great. It's got some un tied loose ends so yep. potentially it'll be another season but it had a real imperative kind of finish as so well dragon prince yeah dragon prince amazing amazing show on okay. netflix um i recognize my mate tamar and he's not a big streamer and apparently he binge watched it which mm. is high praise okay mm. oh talking about netflix so we're, we're talking about um umbrella academy this was actually given to me as a gift yeah yeah i was quite uh, you know one of my friends ayla she's um she's there head writer on our Sunspot magazine. Um, and she does she does all our, our main interviews with people. And also, we've got a, um, Don, who's over in the US, as I mentioned. He does our American interviews uh, with the creators there. But um, Ayla basically went out and um, I just gave her a couple of names of friends I knew and, and, um, and our, you know, our class network of friends, like cosplayers, like um, Verena, who's a translator for... Um, 40k. Warhammer 40k. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so she's back. I'm excited. I haven't caught up with her again. But, um, you know, about how her translation work goes and her as a, as an, as a female nerd in that industry where there's, you know, a lot of, um, there's not many, um, and she's a, um, what is it called? Ad, um, novelized, um, no, translator for Amer uh, you, um, English to German. So uh, 40k, man. How much, do you know about 40k? I know, lots of, wow. Well, Quite a bit about well, 40k. Go for it. Give us a big thing. Give us a bit of spiel. <laughs> well, I used sure. to like play the old war games and stuff. So Space Marines, Orcs, all that kind mm. of good stuff. Um, there's some heavy literature. So like, if you're a fan, you're not necessarily into the lore. Like, you can enjoy bits of the lore. Like, this guy fought this guy, and this mm. is a hero. And, you know, there's got some cool characters. Like, a lot of it's very visual. But then there's a whole another side of it. That's the lore and the stories and the histories, the legends. 
and that's more what these novels are about. I'll be honest, I haven't read the novels, but you, when you get the armies, you have the codexes where you kind of figure out how they they fight the um, like what their reasoning behind their home worlds and their civilizations, and that's interesting. I read that, but again, it's very art heavy. Um, for me, Warhammer has always been a very high status art. Like there's a lot of very detailed line art and they're very stylized. Um, used to like drawing it when I was a bit younger. Yep. Um, still, yeah, still d would dabble, uh, squigs and things. Um, so, uh, it reminded me of when you said Ultramarine. So there's a movie, right? There's an animated movie uh, called Ultramarines, a, for a Warhammer 40k movie. Uh, that. So that came out in 2010. So that's, that's not my only sort of like, apart from the magazines, I had a friend way back in 2003, 2002, who, um, who left a magazine with me. He was a, he was a dentist here. We moved over to U U UK, with, who I haven't kept in touch with, sorry. Um, it's been 20 years, man. It's like, yeah, some time years. flies. Yeah, and so he, he, that's all I know about the, from the magazine, but I never actually looked into it. But if you want to know what 40K is all about, check out Ultramarines, a Warhammer 40K movie. Came out in 2010, animated, right? And I love animated movies. And it, it is good, it kind of like, for the art style, it does very much speak to Warhammer. Yeah. And also for the, the dialogue, because I remember I watched it and I enjoyed the action, mm. but then the old, like, it's not old English, but it's that kind of style. They've got their own style of talking, mm. and it's, it's a bit overbearing, but it's a good film. Is it yeah. John Hirsch? It's John Hurt, yeah, and um, um, who's Ter Terrence? I remember Ter John Hurt and Sean Pertwee. So, like, these are classic actors, English actors. So, uh, John Hurt was in um, the Umbrella, um, the Alpha Man. I mean, classic. I think he got an Oscar for that, if I remember right. Uh, Sean Pertwee, uh, Doctor Who, of course. Terrence Stamp. And now, if I remember Ter Terrence, excuse me, Terrence Stamp, Superman, right? Wasn't he in Superman? That's Jarrell. Um, let me bring this up. That wasn't at Russell Crowe. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, he looks like a badass. Yeah, so let me see. Wanted. Was he, he had a bit of he was, action? Yeah, he's been in um, Electra. Electra. A stick. So, Interesting choice for we, stick. Yeah, while we're talking about uh, Electra, one of the first uh, sup female superhero big movies. That you were really disappointed with. I, I was okay with it. I liked her in Daredevil, but then the Electra yeah. was like, eh. Like, was, they had all those villains, they had the Tattoo Man and things, or what I think was mm. the Tattoo Man, but they didn't really use them. They introduced them all at the end, and it's like, they had some cool powers and stuff, but yeah. they lasted for five seconds, and it's like, why Why did they bother, That's to be it. honest? So, yeah, so back to um, Terrence Stamp. He it's was, in, he was General, General Zod. Hey, Gray. How's it going, bud? Hey, brother. Uh, sorry, can't wave to you. Um, okay, let's. We're gonna get to um, with Todd McFarlane. We're going on the list. I'll McFarlane. get to him in a second. My man. Uh, so, so Terence Stamp. He was General <laughs> Zod, right? Most memorable, like that I can think of. He's been in so many things, but General General Zod. In, um, he was the original. 19, yeah, the original. Oh, he was good in that. The old hairy eight. chest. He was badass. Yeah. So 1978. I was only five years old. Yeah, so he's been around for a long time and he's done a lot of amazing um, work. Mm. Old um, Terrence Stamp. Uh, Alien Nation. I was going to talk about Alien Nation today. Alien Nation. Well, let me just note that down so I don't forget. But um, because... Um, I'm familiar with it, but not quite. <laughs> oh, it's just such an um, awesome t old TV show from the 80s. And it's bender. worth watching. Um, let me just skip back up here. So, what else was he good in? There's a bit of action. So, there. yeah, uh, Wanted TV show again. Oh, the Yes Man. He was like the main guy who made Jim Carrey say yes all the time. All right. So, and he he played Terrence. <laughs> I guess he played himself in that. He was in the Adjustment Bureau, and that's a Philip K. Dick. Well, he is quite a creepy looking dude, to be fair. Yeah. Was, yeah, he's definitely kept himself busy. Typecast. That's the thing. Like, that's a cool thing. And, like, this is the thing about actually about um, actors. They get typecast, right? And, uh, and they bring with them that same character into everything they do because that's what they're asked to do. Just come and do Well, sometimes that's thing. a blessing. Though. I mean, they make, like, archetypes. So yeah. a certain villain always kind of has that kind of creepy whatever mannerism they had or way of saying something. Yeah. It's, it's made for some cool, cool characters. 
He was also in Smallville, the TV series, as jor -El. And that's what, um, that's Thing's father, isn't it? <laughs> Lecturer Kyle's and Ghost Rider are cousins in love. <laughs> one day we might get a good one. So he's still acting. The guy's still acting after all this time, uh, Terrence Stamp. He's not dead yet. 1938. Talking about dead people. Uh, Have you seen some? I uh, know. There was um, someone just passed away. I can't remember this week. I think 200,000 people passed away. No, no, no. There was an actor who passed away who's been in a lot of pictures. <laughs> just body cuts and stuff. Um, <laughs> just no. I shouldn't yeah. joke about that. No. I hope everyone's healthy and well in the comic community yeah, in New just... Zealand. Unfortunately, Humor. our umbrella can't go over the world, but um, yeah. stay safe. And We're well, not touching today to, uh, in kind of coherent, no. I always wash my hands. I don't know why people all of a sudden go into this whole, oh, we've got to wash your hands. It's like, you always got to wash your hands. It's a good you? idea. Always wash your hands. It's like, don't, don't hand all your junk and all wash your hands, seriously. Public <laughs> toilets are the worst places, people, restaurants. Why? Why do people go into toilet, uh, public places and not wash uh, bathrooms and not wash their hands when they come out for decades? I just it just creeps me out. It's like, please, why are you just walking out without washing your hands? This is like everybody's been in here. Mm. Um, Unless anyway. you're really drunk and then it's okay. You know, Even as, then, long as, you, as long as you remember to zip up and put her away. Yeah. You get it home safe. It's a job well done. All right. So the writer for the forty k getting back to the forty k thing. Mm -hmm. Is Dan Abnett. Dan Abnett is, uh, has been writing for um, 2080 for a while, and he's been he's a yeah he's been doing that for a long time. He also um, worked on Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, yeah. Let me just get that on here. Yeah, he was a writer on Guardians of the Galaxy one and two. He also did uh, Aliens Isolation. He's a comic book writer, but also as the know, game. Um, Alien Isolation, the game. Mm. It was like a movie at the start, kind of had the yeah. one alien. And um, yeah, so he's, he's done a lot of work in the game industry for, um, as you mentioned, with, um, let me see, so Guardians of the Galaxy were based on the books that he's, he'd been writing uh, at the time for Marvel. Um, also, Thor Ragnarok. Uh, oh. Thanks. You got thanks for Thor Ragnarok. And I guess it's, because it's the... Um, Character design, some yeah, of the characters we're using in. some of the bits. Yeah. Okay, so Todd McFarlane. Let's get to Todd McFarlane while we're here. Okay, Todd let McFarlane. me just bring it. Yeah. So he is a stand-up guy. All right. So Todd, because the way he built details into the Hulk monsterness through. Where are we? Let me just get that. Not sure why I'm not getting the rest of that. I know the Spawn movie, like, we were, like, he's telling me that he's stuffing up his deals, but I hope it gets out. Yeah. So, so yeah. So, Gray Burton. So, the way he built details into the Hulk monsterness through the Hulk 30, 345, That's brilliant. he went all gnarly. Yep. B brilliant way that I developed Spawn movie coming to you. Now, yeah, no. I, I kind of think it's never going to happen this year. Spawn, eh? yeah. yeah, Spawn's not going to happen this year. He, remember last week I was talking about how he wanted to direct, and he that's one of his things, he wants to direct. The problem with that is, Jamie Foxx pulled out. Oh. Right, his main character pulled out this week. Damn. Okay, that's the big news. Now, when you lose your main uh, Oscar-winning character, uh, nominated character, I'm not sure, did Jamie Foxx win that Oscar? Well, I don't know, but he's talented. He would have yeah. been an excellent fit. So, so I'm disappointed. Well, how come? How did he pull out? I guess he had uh, other um, contracts. It took too long to yeah. come together, maybe. But one of the things is um, you can't make a demand that I want to be the director of something if you have no thing on your back that you've done. I think if you, have, if like, you I haven't think done be a co-director, for sure. Yeah, I reckon be a co-director. Like I was talking about it last week uh, about... Um, uh, what's his name? Miller, Frank Miller, right? Uh, he watched uh, Rodriguez uh, work on Sin City, the first mm -hmm. one. Hung out with them, learned the skills, then went into the second one. Cool. Nobody said no, Frank. You can't have the money to do this. They backed them up because they could see that hey, he learned from the the you know the talented Rodriguez, right? Robert. Now. What do we know that uh, Todd McFarlane's done? Has he gone out and done short films? 
Yeah, so you got it. Um, I suppose sport animated. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know how much he had to do with the putting together of the screenplay, but uh, I think it was. Uh, I had a thought here. Um, can you remind me about um, Danzig? Danzig, Verotica. That's it. Okay, we'll get to that. <laughs> I've been trying to look it up. I mean, yeah. the bits I've seen okay. have been a little bit kind right. of. Right. So I'll remind. So yeah. So talking about um, back to Todd McFarlane. Well, I forgot that one. I'll keep my finger on it. That um, you have to have show people you have the skills to do something, right? You can't just say, "Hey, you know, I just want to do a big movie," because you got to understand, forty to hundred million dollars is involved in it. And even you know, so when we were doing a film school, we'd be like, "You got to do a lot of short films to show people what you can do." That's why you go to film school to learn the skills and how it's done. See, I, I went from like being a stage director, doing short films, to writing and all that stuff, um, to then going to film school to learn how to do that, how to write stories, how to structure stories, how to do all that stuff, and then say, well, now I know how to write stories, and people can trust you to do stories, right? Then you go, well, now you've got the skills, so yeah, you worked at it, wow. and so on. But when you have $100 million dollars, yeah, but I mean, like, for an it's, artist, you've got to take yeah. the money out of it. It's the, the money isn't about the product or what you're putting out or your your message or vision. It's very little to do with money as an artist, generally. Yeah, it, it, but, like... I you, mean, Todd you, McFarlane became a great artist from wanting to be a sports star and having an injury. Right. And then just passionately following that. And he had no experience beforehand. And I he was, fully understand. So, but I mean, the problem with Hollywood is that they... Lightning could struck, strike twice. Yeah, the problem was... Then they'll say, hey, Todd, put up $40 million then. And, but he's, he's like, I want all your money, right? He's like, I'll, I'll, you know, he's, he, maybe he's going, yeah, I will I put th- him money. I think it was Michael yeah. J. White. Yeah, but Michael J. was amazing. And I he's still know around. The end name, but I know he's, he's Michael still J. White. around. Yeah, Michael J. White is still around, and he could he's still, still be good. Be, yeah, but he'd be, be more gnarly. Yeah, and, he's been, and he's, his, his talent skills have gone so much further now than what he was at there. But this is the problem they have, is the money problem. And, and, uh, and they don't want to, as much as I, I want to see Spawn do it, I think he, he should basically go and do a co-directorship with someone else. Don't start saying, this is what I want, this is what well, I, I want. I think that's because... how he originally was putting it forward, though. Mm. Like, because he was going to go with Blumhouse. Michael Bloom yeah. was his guy. Yeah. And he was going to work very closely with them. Yeah. And he was, they were, I think they had a good relationship and they were yeah. ready to go. But they weren't finding the support from, I don't know, funding. Yeah. But then McFarlane does have lots of money. And, like, maybe, yeah. maybe he's not trying to do it by himself. Well, his, no, no, he actually said. He actually, well, sorry for the money, but like he actually said, I, the key thing is that I want to yeah, be the director. He wants to do his message, but he did really want to work with that Michael Bloom, and that you, yeah. the film mentality mm. and the skills and knowledge and experience would be, you know, fed from mm. Michael Bloom to Todd McFarlane working yeah. together, and that could be a great thing. And partnerships are good. I mean, the thing is that, but he, yes, Michael I J. Think, White was spawned on the film. Yeah. And he he's was good. Yeah, he's still around, so yeah, put him back in. Uh, but the problem is that uh, they want to, they always want, like now, they want, they want to tie in, and it's always been the same thing, that the main lead is what the whole film is structured around, because then they can bank on that on that mm-hmm. lead. That's why we well, still it's have... It's hard to focus on team movies, you know, where you share the spotlight. Some yeah. people do it really well, but there's a lot of skills man. of getting the yeah. characters working together. Yeah. Expendables did that really well. You had all the top actors, uh, action heroes coming together to do one thing. And they're up to what? Episode, I mean, like, they did three movies. Um, So, yeah, that works. So, let me talk about Dan Danzig. Word? Verotica. 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 Bring it on. Uh, So, the movie came out uh, as an anthology of Verotica. 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 Uh, is it the name of the whole thing? Uh, well, they've got different characters, and then Veronica is one bit of it. Right. So, um, I can't remember what what is... Um... Well, it's meant to be really edgy, and, you know, nudity and violence and stuff. I've watched the trailer, and I didn't get... I, I mean, if I did get a taste of the violence and whatnot, it was just... It, it felt like a bit... What's the word? Uh, you know, like, a bit budget... 
Um, oh, it's Glenn Danzig. Why do I say, keep saying Dan Danzig? Glenn Danzig. Yeah, but okay, I don't so think it, it's meant to be budget. So I mean, maybe it does pick up. So I was trying to watch it. There was. Feel. So he basically um, directed a lot of it, and I think he would have learned a lot from it. This is what I'm talking about, like with Todd McFarlane. So he, there was a whole lot of um, short um, vignette uh, uh, films uh, involved in this whole um, setup. Let me just grab this up here on IMDb uh, of what they're doing. Uh, where are we? Director. Latest. Right, Veronica. So, it's just been released, came out last year, but, so the movie of this, the title is uh, Veronica. Uh, right, so this is uh, Glenn Danzig directorial debut. It's a horror anthology that compiles stories from Glenn Danzig line oh, of comic like books of the same right? name. Yeah. Yeah, I could get into that. Yeah. I mean, that, that's a kind of hit and miss, you know. They have a mm. few gems and a few... So maybe that's what I was, you know, like you could yeah. just be seeing one part of it. So so he basically directed and wrote the whole thing. Now, the writing's okay. But some of, um, from what I've seen, some of the uh, directing is not good. And it's it looks very um, low budget. That was what I saw. And it, it seems very very low budget. And um, and I think it didn't it, show much of the uh, CGI stuff. Because if they step that, I up, don't think that they could, did CGI. That could, that could redeem a bit, or even the prop yeah. kind of things or prosthetics. Because I imagine they're in there. Oh yeah, it's mo it it's mostly prosthetics. Much, it didn't show much yeah. of it in those trailers. Yeah, I don't. I'll, as much as I'm um, great, as much as I like, um, he's saying that Midsummer guy for the Spawn director, taken into a disrupted, unexpected space. Moments within, the actors and uh, Veronica all spent weeks learning French accents. They're all American. Why? Yeah. That's so true. Yeah, it could have been a classy uh, overseas international film. Yeah. I, I think it may, mainly this is that doesn't make sense though. Why? Why would they? You're it right. To make the scantily clad girls look sexier, a French accent it would it works well. But what were the characters Veronica based in France? To be honest, I mean again, it's been a long time. <laughs> I, so really. I just remember seeing some yeah. like pretty intense scenes in the. Mm. <laughs> the other thing was that I noticed, like yeah, with the prosthetics, they're really not well done. Well, that's and, it. I uh, think that's the. Uh, it's, mm. it's it's it's, and. And going back to Todd McFarlane, right, there's going to be a lot of money and CGI built into what they're going to do with this movie. So that has to be taken into account. And, or else you're going to have something like... Uh, and Spawn's a classic movie, right? For its time. It's a classic R18 movie. Yeah, well, it was an edgy thing. It just yeah. I think it had a lot of expectations behind it, mm. and that's why it didn't fare so well, because it wasn't yeah. a bad movie, but it had such a, a big impact mm. that, you know, when you look back, you're like, oh, it probably could have been better. The animation. And, and the good the, thing is, yeah. John McFarlane acknowledges that. Yeah. I mean, the animated series, perfect example. Yeah. Like, if he just converted what that was into yeah. a feature film or part of that, it would have been better. Simple. Well, the other thing is, if he's failing at trying to get the movie off the ground, go to Netflix and do a TV series. Uh, animated series, yeah, right? Yeah, should, yeah. Uh, you're talking about which? Uh, Castlevania came out last week? I enjoyed that. Yep, I haven't watched the last two episodes, but... But your anime feel made me think of it, because yeah. one of the vampire chicks, yep. so there's, a, there's a lot more sex in there, I can tell you that, so... Yeah, it's kind of... <laughs> yeah, it's, it's they've just sort of kept stepping it up in that sense. Uh, but I, it's kind of fun. It was a weird message, I found, like, this time around. Like, they were trying to be political in the, some of the things, like toilet paper. Toilet paper? <laughs> there was, toilet paper was mentioned quite a lot in it. If you if you watch it, it was like, uh, one of the characters, oh, yes, what yeah. the hell is toilet paper? And the other guy goes, goes, you know, it's something that happens, you know, something <laughs> no that price. they use in China. It's like, <laughs> it's, it's kind of, yeah, it was maybe the time it was uh, ADR, it was before all this happened with Corona, but it was kind of funny to... You're right. It was kind of timely. Yeah. It was. Yeah. It wasn't there several times. I felt like it was a historic lesson, like it showing was. you how old it is, and how old it was in China or right. the Middle East. It was. Um, yeah. Oh, not the Middle East. <laughs> I have forgotten what was the other. Um, anim oh yeah. So uh, there is a altered carbon animation coming out. Yeah. So I'm quite excited about that. It's going to come out on in a couple of days. 16? This weekend, kind of I think. Fun, the, the amount of stuff yeah. that comes out. All we can do is just go, there's this coming next. 
Yeah. And, and it looks like something's happening. <laughs> There's constantly new stuff that's comic related or you know, exciting. Mm. Oh, it's a great thing. It had um, Veronica had a nice um, lighting in this. You know, um, I think the scene I saw had guy. like quite purple light. Mm. But that's the, that's the tone of Veronica, isn't it? Like it's yeah, got, well, it has. It's got like, like sort of like purplish, black gray um, whole imagery going through the entire. Uh, I think series. it probably should have been darker. Mm. From what I saw, is because the the cheapness was there, like and the lightning. The lighting could hi hide that a little bit. Yeah, you know? well, and effects, backlight a little bit, effects. some some theatrical lighting. Yeah. And it probably did have it, so I mean, I've got to watch it. So, yeah. I mean, great. Other than lighting, like, have you watched it? What's What's it like? You know, that that probably is my question. Because I'd watch it for sure. I was excited. Yeah. I just from what I saw, I was uh, underwhelmed. But maybe it's so hardcore they can only show the real tame mm. like scenes that don't really show much action or excitement, um, which is possible. I think. Um... I mean, there is also this huge demand for, because of Hollywood blockbusters, right? Every movie has to now make five hundred million plus, and um, and so the producers are basically going, well, you know, to get your Spawn movie off the ground. Sorry for hanging out on Spawn for so long, but um, off the ground, we got to make sure that we meet our targets, and that has got to be looming over his head and his producers. And Bloomhouse is going to be the producers, right? Um, so yeah, it's, it's weird, like, um, where Hollywood is right now, talking about where Hollywood is right now, coronavirus, a lot of movies are, are <laughs> going to be delayed. A lot of movies are going to be delayed. <laughs> fast. Yeah. Well, you might as well go streaming. Yeah. Maybe, maybe that's But cool, they're yeah. talking about streaming is that there's no kickbacks for the actors. Because, uh, what it was with streaming is, I was listening to a podcast earlier, is that with streaming... It basically goes on streaming, you don't know how many people are watching it, and you're not going to get money off it, right? Because it's part of a whole whole deal. Unless you go, well, this is... Because if you go to the movies, you're going to get a, like $500 million. You go to streaming, you might even get $100 million. Because all they're going to pay for, mm. right, is how much the movie cost. Because all that's why they make their own movies, right? That's why Netflix makes their own movies. They get, they get it at cost. Their subscription um, payers pay them back for that cost, then they make money when they get new subscribers. So they're not, not skimming so much off the top. Right. So the, the same subscribers that aren't paying any more, it's a new subscriber. So they got to put in something like, say, if they, like, this is what Disney's doing, right? So every time Disney puts a movie out in the, out in the world, uh, sorry, in the theaters, then they get the streaming money as well. Mm -hmm. Whereas if these... So go, they're double dipping. Right. So, but if they just go to streaming... Single dipping, not enough money coming. So they've de they delayed Fast 9. Uh, I think there was, uh, Mulan's going to be delayed as well. Oh, um, Bloodshot. They Bloodshot's, delayed Bloodshot. Yeah, Bloodshot's yeah, already... Okay, so they, ready. Isn't it supposed to be it March? It should be here. Right? should be here no, already. 14th. 14th? I think... It's, I don't think it's on yet, but yeah. it's on very soon. So I'm waiting for that. Um, so check. <laughs> I was able to pick up a couple of posters yesterday from... Uh, for... Um, even though the movie's uh, still out uh, for Birds of Prey. I collect movie posters, so it doesn't matter. As long as it's a comic book, it's fantasy and sci-fi. It doesn't say Harley Quinn or Birds it. of Prey. <laughs> that one says Birds of Prey, so it's before <laughs> the new ones came out. Um, what was it? Um, what did you think of, like, we, we went and watched, um, and we didn't mention it last week, Oh, release date the twelfth. Shit. Yeah. So it's, it's out, out today. yesterday. All right. So um, whoa. Well, before I blow. So someone's probably seen it. Yeah. So before I answer Grace, um, I mean, look at Grace comment. Um, who's a furry hedgehog? Sonic. <laughs> Sonic. Right. <laughs> Sonic. Sorry, my mind just went blank. No. Right. So what did you think of Sonic? I loved it. All right. It now the reason the reason I ask that is because there's a whole thing was outgoing, you know, in the media, mass media over in America, going, people just don't want any more game adapted movies. Well, I think we've got more coming. Yeah, and and it's like that. It's like the bad. Yeah, it's Larry the opposite Trump. of that. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, Keep it, it coming. The only thing is, that if they don't think it doesn't make a hundred a, a billion dollars, it's bad. 
and this is like this is what's going to happen and which is going to destroy how stories are written how uh, what we get to see what we get to watch if it isn't going to make 500 to a billion dollars people are going to say that's junk but if a movie makes double its amount it's fine right because it's sustainable you've covered yeah and you can go and keep making more but they're so concerned about breaking that 500 million to a billion that they won't touch anything new. Now, so you're saying that um, I like Tomb Raider, the mm. new one, oh, Alisa Alisa Vikander. Really she was amazing, the German actress. Yeah. Amazing. I don't know why. I didn't expect to like it as much. So yeah. I did. It was fun. Mm. And but that's the thing. So if it's fun, people are going to enjoy it. Um, the other thing was. Um, what else were you saying that's going to come out? Oh, Mortal Kombat oh, animation yeah. series, oh, um, yeah, animated yeah, movie. Yeah, sorry, well, that looked good. Yeah, R eight. Is it R eighteen? Well, Seems like a R eighteen. Uh, gutting and stuff. Yeah. I, I imagine. So it's basically going to be like um, Castlevania. Of course, Mortal Kombat's always about being gutting and stuff, right? Yeah. Tearing off people's heads and stuff. Um, okay, With Mr. so Comment. yeah, so I'm going to come back here and grab um, Grey Comet. It's, so he's talking about uh, Ver Veronica, talking about it's like a room with all the weirdly aimed porn redirected toward horror, um, body toward body horror without the charisma of Tommy Visu, uh, faking it till it makes it by ma being as bad as it can be. <laughs> I love that they saying. made it though. Total respect. That's true. That's the oh, thing. Right? That's so, a passion project, right yeah. there. <laughs> and um, yeah. Uh, Barry Duffield is putting up a massive collection of posters. By the way, it is a collection to be held. Oh, sweet! Is that on like on the on the group? Man, there's a, there's a lot of goodies out there. Yeah, I mean. um, there I I would, if anything, I want a Constantine poster. I lost mine, my original poster from the movie, which I got when oh. when it came out in two thousand five. <laughs> I lost it between moving, and it's my as you know, Constantine is one of my favorite characters, top three. And it might even be number two after Batman. Even Keanu. Even Keanu. <laughs> I, I I don't mind Keanu in it. I just wish he had gone blonde. That's that's the only thing I wanted Keanu to do in that was to go blonde. And he didn't go blonde. But of course, he's got black locks. And I had to go, overlook that. But, uh, yeah, I just, I was gutted. It's been, what, 15 years? In between moving, uh, separation, whatever, houses, uh, flats. I lost my poster. Send this guy a Keanu Reeves poster, please. Yeah, the movie poster. <laughs> Constantine. Uh, so, so the Mortal Kombat, like um, the gaming. Did you play that? Because you're a gamer, right? Oh yeah, I play Mortal Kombat. Right, so I remember the f last time that I can think of playing Mortal Kombat was in Pi here, which was back in 80... 80? 88. Was that Mortal Kombat two? Yeah, it was on the <laughs> arcades. So we. <laughs> Over in Pahia, they had, um, oh, it's on his page, Barry Duffield's page. Okay. Um, so, yeah, we were, we hitchhiked to Pahia and being the weekends there, and I'm not a great gamer, and I suck at it worse than anybody. Even a child could play, beat me at anything. So, um, but that's when I remember playing Mortal Kombat, like with the big arcade machines, you know, 20 cents to play forever. I remember saving up for a Super Nintendo <laughs> to get it. Was it on there? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Like, I, I saved up for a console. I remember mm. that. And it was like my first time saving up a couple of hundred dollars for a console. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what's the anime? Um, I can't remember what the name is. on Sega as well. Okay. Mm. Oh, what's the anime um, this, this weekend, or oh, this past week? And I can't remember what it was called. But they, were, they must have partnered up with... Um, who's the creators of... Um, Ayukin? Street Fighter. Street Fighter. So they had like <laughs> actual Street Fighter in the, like they, these characters were playing like, a Street boom. Fighter in it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so who, Chun Li? Hummingbird Kick. Yeah. So, and, and who's the, the Russian? Zangief. Yeah. So they had Zangief and um, Chun Li, Chun Li fighting each other on that. Talk about that. There was a movie with uh, Kristen Crook. Kristen Crook from the Dada Street Fighter movie. Back in the that? day, with Kylie Minogue. No, I think it was. Um, it wasn't that far away. Um, was it animated? This is no. It was a actually uh, feature film. It was. It was. It was done. Um, it had Van Damme. 
Yeah, that was an earlier one. So this is they one with Chun Li. I think this was the one with the Chun Li one. Real. Um, let me just see. And she was playing Chun Li or something. Let me just find it. It was after. There we go. Street Fighter: The Legend of Chun Li in two thousand nine. Oh wow! So this is uh, this is the movie she did. This was a movie straight after uh, Street Fighter finished. It got released in New Zealand. I'm not. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think it made it here. And did it have all the characters? What? So when How I did I watch this? So when a teenager um, Chun Li witnesses a kidnapping of a father by a wealthy crime lord M Bison. Yeah. Wait, what? That's weird. Sounds all right. No, but look at the way it's written. So when a when a teenager Chun-Li witnesses a kidnapping of a father by a wealthy crime lord... <laughs> that's great. And Thanks Bison, for joining us. That's full stop. You yeah, have a good night, and brother. Oh, cheers, dude. Thank you. Um, yeah, this will be on here um, afterwards when we finish. <laughs> yeah, watch the other hour later. Yeah. <laughs> so, so... Oh, um, kilo sale at uh, Jeremy Arkham's tomorrow. Yeah, you lucky... Persons who are who are in Auckland tomorrow, go out and support it. <laughs> go shovel a kilo or two of comics. Oh, seriously, and then he was doing like two dollars um something grams. Yeah, it's just when you get in small amounts once you got your first kg. Yeah. but well worth the look. Definitely twenty bucks per kg of of oh, comics. Ah, oh. I'll be just going drop, drop, drop. Give me another. Okay, so basically, so when she grows up, she goes into a quest for vengeance and becomes a famous crime fighter of the Street Fighter universe. So, yeah, so this was in 2009. Uh, Neil McDonough? McDonough? You, you guys probably remember it. Michael Clark people. Duncan was in it as well. Uh, oh, so, yeah. It's, um, what's his face from Arrow? Yeah, so... Oh. Yeah, the Betty from Arrow, right? Yeah, I can't remember who he played, but I remember. Uh, Damien Dark from That's Arrow. That, yes. right. from, uh, and also from DC's Legends of Tomorrow. Uh, so yeah, and he's also in Altered Carbon. So yeah, and he was in Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh my God, I love the guy even more. Yeah, and Van Helsing. So uh, <laughs> Neil McDonough, he's been around for years, and uh, of course he's a great actor. He's just that, you know, that, like talking about typecasting, right? He's the mean guy all the time. Uh, I reckon making okay old James Bond. Yeah, he's got that look about him. We're talking about James Bond. I wrote, I, they should have just put. Um, Daniel Craig after past and for an Eldritch Elba. I'm tired of Daniel Craig. He's such a wuss. You're up for a change up? Yeah, I just want to get rid of him and bring in someone who's... It's, it's interesting. We're so anti with the comics with those those broad changes. But yeah. then for James Bond, you're like, nah, I'll just do it. <laughs> no, no, but I mean, he's not. He's such a wussy of a character now. Like He's, he's, he's like the biggest James Bond there's ever been. Mm -hmm. Well, when he's in that first one, he's quite like... In the first bold. one, he's good. Yeah, well, he's too much for me. I don't really yeah. uh, enjoy it myself, yeah. but... Uh, he, um, also, uh, Neil McDonough was in um, Captain America. I do think Idris Elba the was first, really yeah. good in that um, the fat Hobbs and Shaw, the the Fast and Furious. Like was he had a James Bond kind of badass kind of mm -hmm. secret agent vibe to him, and so I'm not saying he can't play the role, but I mean I think again, yeah. and he he's English, can, he can kind of define his own character though. You yeah. Know? yeah, it doesn't have to be James Bond; it could be the next guy. He could Ooh. be James Bond's buddy and then he could take over the show. That sure, he fine. could be the underling, right? He could um, be Sean right. Bean. Sean Bean? Because he was like the, the James yes. Bond guy. To, he was awesome in James Bond. Yeah. And he should have taken over. I think, yeah, I think... Um, it's that. Yeah, I'm kind of tired of his act, uh, Daniel Craig. It's like he's, it's the only thing he's kind of like recognised for now. I've never been a huge fan. Mm. Okay, so... Did, have you read Dharma Punks? Like last week we were talking about, um, what was, oh, we were talking about the other one of Ant Sank's book. So this is Dharma Punk. So it's a collection of all his, uh, um, all of his early works, right? Uh, so it's in black and white, but there's like some color co covers that he's put in there, illustrations. So uh, the Dharma Punks burst on the New Zealand comic scene in 2001. Jeez, 20 years. Oh, Dylan no. Horrocks. Yeah. Uh, described as a, medica a med meditation on life, punk rock, and blowing things up. It became the, one of the best-selling local comic series of all time. You know what? I'm going to say I didn't read it at the time. No, neither. I was out of comic books. so I. Um, but the cool thing is, Adrian has made a collection of it. Sorry, it's backwards. Um, so if it's not at your library, if it's not at your booksellers, 
uh, hook up. That's a nice presentation. Yeah. Hook up uh, it's Earth's Ed publish, um, Earth's End dot, is it like, what is it Earth's yeah, End dot co dot NZ. And hit up Adrian Kennard. Kennard or Kennard? I, I never met him, so Kennard, I'm presuming. And ask them, you know, order a book for him, right? Or even, hey, jump on here and get order a copy from me. It's $35. Um, and it's really good. Uh, I, I I just really love it. It's a cross between like uh, manga, but very um, underground looking thing. And do you it want does to have an yeah. underground feel. And it's it's such a cool um, like if you look at the artwork, as you can see, it's very punk, very underground feel to it. Lots of dark colors. It feels and, pretty kiwi too. And yeah, and it's 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 really cool. It's based in Auckland and Ponsonby and stuff. So, and you know, it's really, really good book. If you, yeah, it's really worth it. And yeah, uh, sorry, it's 45, but 30 bucks, man, if you want it through us. But um, it's, it is a good presented book. It's, 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 it's really good to well see such together. a, yeah. And this is what I like about Adrian. He's really puts out really good um, publications. And I think he's doing a great job for, for New Zealand comics. Uh, independent comics. I mean, the, I don't think he's like a mainstream, right? Compared to everybody else in New Zealand, because um, well, I think there's lots of people you don't know about. Like I've heard of him, and yeah. he's definitely done some kind of commentary stuff as well. That's kind of built his profile. Like he's kind of yeah. in the the perch. So there's probably others. Yeah, and you know, there's always things going on that we don't well, know about. There's so Ben Stanbeck who, who does a lot of work with um, with the guys who put out Umbrella Academy, as I mentioned. Um, for Dark Horse Comics. Yeah, right. Kiwi. So, yeah, Ben Stanbeck up in Dunedin, if I remember oh, right. Me. So, um, he does a lot of work for Dark Horse, and he's been doing it for almost probably have about you, 12 years now. Have you met him? I have talked to him. I interviewed him for the radio show when we were doing it in 2018. Do you feel uh, like you could talk to him again? I'd love to talk to him again. Because a wonderful thing with these New Zealand guys, yeah. and uh, as they're coming up and stuff, is they're, they're, a lot of them are very approachable. I remember when I was younger... Yeah. I reached out to Dylan Horrocks was the one. Yeah. <laughs> I sent him some of my bits. And he was nice. You, you know, well, so it's we could, cool that you've got that kind of ability to... We could basically sit down here and get them on a phone and we could talk to them, right? Uh, like on um, Instagram. Not Instagram, sorry. Like actually on, on a webcam and talk to them and interview them. So, if, hey, if you're an artist out there, if you're up and come off your established Kiwi artist, right? Not worry about everybody around the world, but we might put them on sometime. But I'm really interested in giving our guys, local guys, a huge profile around the world. And of course, you guys are already doing your thing. You're already building your own profiles yeah. up on Instagram, on Patreon, on YouTube, whatever you're doing. But it'd be nice to just basically jump on here with us and talk about what you're doing. It'd be cool. Yeah. yeah. It'd be an, it'd be an, it could be an early boost. It could be someone very new. Yeah. Like, and realistically, for me, the group, you know, mm. people who a part of it if you're passing through and want to be part of it or you want to share stuff then tell us like yep. i promote people like um jeremy and darren and tama well tama's part of this too you know yep. but it's like supporting the events like but we don't know what we don't know let us know what's going on yeah and you the know, good... if you want to get on and talk you know you're more than yeah. welcome to join us i mean that's a cool thing about it i mean um it's i mean i've been doing this sort of stuff it's not new to me all right guys I've been doing this since uh, 2012. Since he discovered the mirror. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, I'm doing about comics, promoting other, uh, like Kiwi creators. I like, think uh, talking. <laughs> talking, yeah. No, but like, I mean, I remember like uh, promoting people uh, on the internet way back in about 2012. So eight years, maybe even 2010. When I went to Armageddon and I got approached by the guys in um, um, um sorry online from India, and they wanted to, uh, um, this is like um, I think comicaddicts.com, and they wanted to promote, to see what was going on in the other people's um, areas around the world. Yeah. And I, you know, this when I in the pulse. Yeah. So I get on do a little short video with Adrian, and other people, and interview them and chuck it out. This is like way, you know, a decade ago. So. And I haven't stopped promoting Kiwi creators. So I think for us to just carry on doing that would be cool. And like you said, just jump on here and talk yeah, with well, us. Yeah, I think it's cool. Like for me, it's the public. So like yeah. we've both got our own angles. But uh, 
the fact of being part of it is is a fantastic thing and it yeah. works for both of us so both those things all work together yeah meeting poor people sharing ideas talking you know understanding more mm. in and sharing your knowledge or your knowledge of events or you know good you know, these posters for sale the grand yeah. mansion that could be cool to joe check out there's a lot of comic art that came up a little while ago yeah. on trade me and um, yeah. i think people talked about it on the group and that's that's it, you know, letting people know what's going on out there. I mean, there is a huge, huge uh, fandom, right? As well as a few huge creators who are doing their own thing that n none of us will hear of because they're doing it on their own private thing and they have their own Patreon or they have their own, um, excuse me, I mentioned here um, Pixiv. Uh, it's P-I-X-I-V, right? So if you're a creator uh, who's trying to earn a bit of money, you can jump on there, uh, P-I-X-I-V. There's another one called N-I-J-I-E dot info. That's I-N-F-O. Um, N-I-N-I-G-I-E dot info. What's that? Those are like uh, Patreon type websites where you can get paid for your work. Uh, like, um, you know, the whole setup, like you can buy artwork and stuff. Um, that they've started up because early on, as we mentioned, like the whole deal with Patreon trying to censor stuff. And Patreon's getting to be where they're basically dictating who, who gets to be on it. Because they're getting big. This is what happens when you become big and mainstream. People start saying, well, you can't do this, you can't do that. You keep it going. And that kind of sucks. So the guys are saying, uh, Patreon guys are saying, well, we're going to move to these other sites because we're not into that. Um, Disneyland. Yeah, I've been there. Closed down. What? Because of CV. Oh, well, fair enough. Right? So, Happiest place on earth. Can't be very happy if yeah. everyone's dying. And some people want to say well i'm going to ignore that and this has been on um on uh, on twitter people saying if i'm going to die i'm going to die in the heaviest place in the world so yeah. i'm going to go against everything go do that it's like okay well people you're allowed to do what you want but of course so it's open but people aren't going or it's closed no no it's closed they've closed disneyland um due to that so as we mentioned earlier because of coronavirus um all the um, all the big Parks are going to be closed. There's a huge breakouts and, um, you know, people catching them in America. And so, as you know, Trump was on there talking about how serious it is now. And, of course, here with um, the Pacifico is closed down. Uh, should have been postponed. They've cancelled it, but should be postponed. Anything like big like that for us, for our community, just postpone it to another time period until everything's settled down. We'll, you know, people first, right? We want to make sure that people That's are protected true. first. That's true, yeah. And the movies, right? This affects the movie industry huge because you people well, close aren't, proximity, right? You're going to be like sitting right here and touching arms and that's stuff. That's hard, though. You know, like I mean, it, are we seeing a lot of it firsthand? I mean, yeah. Like, yeah, we don't want to, but I haven't seen a bunch of it like near yeah. me that I'd but be once, scared. The thing is, once uh, it you know it moves around, then we'll be getting a bit weirded out. I think for us. Our, my main concern is like our borders should be closed because Australia, right? They've had huge breakouts. Um, doctors are catching it there. So it's going to get bigger. So I'm a bit, my concern is protect New Zealanders first, right? And not, not be worried about money because you can always make money, but you can't always get life, right? Once That's you're gone, once you're gone. So put people first and ignore all that. Okay, so... Yeah, so the theaters are getting affected because, like I said, they're too close. Um, and um, people in America are saying, well, we're going to wipe it down all the time. And, you know, we're going to make sure we're going to do tests on our, on our, um, our, sorry, our workers. Make sure that they're, they're healthy. But it's like, you got a 14-day period, period, right? So how do you know they haven't caught it and it's hit in a way? So it's a weird thing. Right, so enough of that. Um, let's get to... Yeah, that wasn't very comic-y. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't very comic-y. So let's get to this thing. Battle Royale. That was good. You got to watch it. I haven't seen it in a while. Well, it's one of my favorite movies. Talk, talk us about uh, Battle Royale. Oh, wow. Okay, from the shallow, like, not reading into things, it's actually very good because uh, they basically, they have a population problem, I believe, or crime problem. Yeah. And so they try to get rid of the young people, try to control them and make them kind of more manageable. And so they randomly select a school, very Hunger Games style, 
Yeah. And then they just kind of throw yeah. it on them and all of a sudden the military is in there forcing them to go to war. Yeah. And they don't want to do it straight away, of course. And, you know, there's a bit of push and shove there. Pretty brutal. Uh, a lot of fun. Uh, I mean, it wouldn't be fun mm. to be doing it. And so, I mean, this is an interesting topic yeah. because, I mean, it's very much a, a scary negative yeah. outlook on things. But, I, you know, like if you've got the right mindset, it's, it's, a, it's a hell of a lot of fun. And it's they a, add a lot of characters. Yeah, like. it's, an, it's a classroom full of characters, right? So the whole classroom's there. So it, Set there to battle it out. Um, so, it's an R-rated movie, horror, violent, full action uh, action thing. Now you mentioned Hunger Games. This movie is basically as as a as a baby, like as the originator of the whole Hunger Games style movies that came afterwards. Mm. Anything with Battle Royale, this is where it was it was from. And there's been a lot of contestants uh, contestants uh, contesting of whether this was where she got the idea from. Uh, what's her name? I can't remember from the Hunger Games. Oh, um... The, it's kind of in my uh, head, but I can't remember. I can't, I can't remember. Uh, yeah, so, she, yeah, so, every, if you, if, you know, histor this is the thing about, like, knowing what the original was. And one of the things... Oh, about, Cat in the 70s. No, the writer. <laughs> oh, I, I, you know me, I look at pictures. Right, so... Yeah, so this is uh, this is a Japanese movie, by the way. So it's going to be a lot of sub subtitles, but if you're an anime watcher... It's amazing course, how the subtitles turn into words in your head. Like, yeah. it does it to me every time I watch a German movie, and I was yeah. like, oh, I'm not going to get this. At Seventh Warrior or something, like the mm. Viking one, and all of a sudden in my head I just had the voices talking in language I could understand. It was amazing. I'm trying to figure out who's the director on this. Um, it was uh, the teacher. The yeah, teacher yeah. Got Taka, fired. Takashi uh, Kitano. I watched a ton of his movies. Uh, Takashi Kitano is an amazing personality. He's like, he's like, the he's like a he, badass. He's done everything. He's basically done game shows. He's done comedy. He's done writing, directing, producing, acting. Mud wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> well, he, he does crazy shows, um, and he's just a legend of uh, of cinema in um, Japan. But of course, if you if you love gangster movies, you gotta watch Katano movies, right? Um, just he's he's just amazing writer director of gangster movies, like mafia based. Uh, sorry, triad 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 based mm. movies and really cool. And the Yakuza. And the Yakuza, yeah. I oh, know, Triad's Chinese, isn't it? Yeah. Yakuza's Japanese, yeah. yeah. So Yakuza samurai type uh, movie. Hey, so yeah, so yeah, Battle Royale must watch. Um, it was very good. Yeah. And yeah, it's very serious movie. It's got that comic feel to it, like a, a comic or manga, like yeah. it, it sucks you right on this. As... It, yeah, the man, it is very mangerish, isn't it? Anime based. But the, the shots and the yeah. way it's performed, uh, yeah, it's brilliant. I can't, I'm not sure. Yeah, I might have to check it up to see if it's based on a Even manga. the two older kids who are under their school, are they, they, yeah. they like like mega kind of stereotypes. Mm. Beautiful. Yeah, I was going to... Well, Throw up uh, some comments. Have you guys watched... Have someone, Vion. Uh, Valerian and, uh, yes. and the City of a Thousand Planets. I have. But so, if, if you... I think, it, excuse me, I think uh, my tap's leaking. While he's doing that, we'll do the final prize pack drawing. Craig Byrne. I will PM you after, and um, we'll sort you out with a little comic pack. Now, there's five of you guys. It's just for, like, taking part in our poll, so thanks yep. again. So, I mean, don't expect the world. Um, so, we have Craig Byrne, Acorn, we have Chantel. Swind and Daniel Cowan. Mm. I'll be in touch. Right, so Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets. A lot of what we see in Star Wars was inspired. Is inspired by that. By Valerian. By the comics. By the comics. So what happened was that because people who had watched um, Valerian thought it was a copy of Star Wars, not realizing that a lot of people that actually worked on Star Wars 
were inspired by the comics because most of them were from Europe who worked on it, the art styles and stuff. So there's you can do scene by there's certain scene by scenes in the comics uh, from Valerian. I can't remember the, the female's name. Sorry guys, uh, his co-actor because it's Valerian and so um, and another name in the comics. That's right. Um, so, but I love that. But um, that whole series and the movie was amazing on its own. But the comparison kind of makes people not want to watch it. So if you didn't like Star Wars, the new series, the new alternate verse uh, trilogy, go watch Valerian and the City of Thousand Planets because it's just going to be something different to enjoy. It's a full story. It's amazing. But the comic book, right, it's based on the European comic book series. Uh, I think Laura it's Lean. Laura Lean. Valerian Laura and Laura Lean. Lean. Right? The 16 volumes. This is before even... George Lucas had dreamt of Star Wars. Yeah, right? that's a good... Um, because you're right, the UK did produce a lot of the Star Wars posters and concept mm. art, and so it makes sense that they'd be inspired perhaps by something purely overseas. Yeah. Uh, so that's actually an interesting fact I didn't really know. I think it was about 1968 when Valerian came out. So, you, you know... Well, it was about, very bold at the time. Yeah, and about, what was it, 78 when Star Wars came out? So, 79... So, yes, there's a whole, almost like a decade and, you know, five, five to five years to a decade uh, where the, this comic had already been out. So you can do so this. They've done in the, um, in the Valerian um, comparisons in the actual volumes of comic books where they said, this is a scene here and this is a scene here of Star Wars. And so you're like, whoa, that's exactly like the, like the cantina scene. The, the, it's like the exact copy is in Star Wars. So and some of the ships and stuff. But yeah, I mean, that style. No, it actually looks like. But it, the, the the you know like how it's the, the sci-fi style with all the kind of straight lines and stuff. Mm. At the time, it probably yeah you know, there wasn't many things to lean on for inspiration. Exactly, especially in the in the uh, uh, American comics. Because it was very bold. It was yeah. new. It was you know taking chances. Mm. Because in the American comics at the time, they were concentrating on um, superheroes because they weren't allowed to do horror because horror was considered adult, and they actually I think it was in the fifties they got rid of the whole horror. Um, horror genre and they put in the certification you know a lot about the certification I know a little bit yeah. uh, but no it was in the 60s wasn't it it was like EC comics and then yeah. they had their horror comics and then they just got controlled similar to what we're getting nowadays with, with anime with yeah kind of putting blankets over it you can't have this or you mm. can't kill this person that way or everyone's yeah. got to go away and be happy uh, yeah. so they had a lot of kind of rules put on them Again, <laughs> I know yeah, that I know that it kind of tarnished the stories and made it so like it had to be more. You got used to your heroes always kind of going, yeah, you know, like good yeah. job, pal, kind of thing. Yeah, because it was very wholesome. It had to be wholesome. So you saw the whole horror genre die out. You saw the whole sci-fi genre die out in the American comics industry, uh, and just you know because prior to the sixties, it wasn't all about superheroes, no. right? It was a all over. Now, while the while the um, the European market was doing everything, just blanket every all genres, US has, had to decide to stay on the superhero genre, mm -hmm. and so now we see a lot more stuff like um, you know, like Umbrella Academy, like um, Tokyo Ghost, independent creators doing whatever you know, bringing back Conan. Have you read any of the new Conan books? Still about in the Conan? Savage Avengers, or uh, yeah, they brought them into modern day, didn't they? Yeah, I, I enjoyed the Savage Avengers, but they tucked it away in the Savage Land, so you didn't really. Yeah, how do you? It's still going, I believe, at the yeah. moment, and I kind of I haven't fallen off the truck, but I haven't yeah. invested in Savage Avengers recently, mm. and I probably I don't think there's been any big events in it. Um, but at the beginning, all those characters, Punisher, Wolverine, yeah. Uh, was it Electra as well? It was all the badass you, characters together, and yeah, then Conan. But how? Do, yeah, how do you do that? I mean, how do you? Well, Red Sonja went to the the modern day as well. So I yeah, mean, they they well, they're just trying why to try would, a different angle. I suppose. Yeah, why would you want to bring Conan into the into the Marvel universe? Well, why not create his own universe? Red Sonja, Kroll, the Conqueror. You know that whole create his own universe and this is the weirdness of what they want to do over at marvel is like take other characters that don't even belong in the, 
in the universe and drop drop into the universe. Well, I think the codon was interesting because they tried to put it in with uh, Hercules, so I know about how he got there. Yeah. And that was kind of cool. It was the old mythology, old gods versus new gods, mm. and uh, and uh, Scarlet Witch kind of got pulled off into the past or the different world where Conan was and yeah. ended up bringing him back as a... A remnant. So yeah. similar to like Evil Dead when, you know, Ash travels and he brings back a deadite with him, you know? Like, yeah. So but you, that's his own universe though, But you right? could see how that story might work, how mm. you could end up with a tag-along character and it's a new experience for uh, for Conan. I'm a big Conan fan and I am. Me he too, does yeah. fit better in the fantasy yeah. stage. And I just don't want to touch this this, but I mean, like, you thing. can dabble in it. I mean, I don't think it will last, but seeing him fight Punisher yeah. or Wolverine, cool. Yeah, we, you know, like a lot of times it's like a we, barbarian fighting as like the alien characters. Like what? But and what yeah. if we'd see like Wolverine versus Hulk or Thor versus Hulk, and we'd like it as a one-off story, and often they're pushed back to Conan's yeah. times. But in this stage, it's like oh shit, he's in the now, yeah, and he's fighting them in the, the real that, world. Isn't that what um, Dynamite is doing with, uh, with um, Red Sonja? Is it Red? So no, Red um, Sonja is in the modern day. Vampirella. Is it Vampirella well, as Vampirella well? Vampirella never was a historic kind of figure. Yeah. She was kind of 60s style. So she was kind of held in her era for a while. Mm. But, I mean, I think she's moved with the times. Let's see. Um, so we're hitting the um, hour and a half mark at 9 o'clock. So do you have anything else to say so before we close it off here? I don't think so. Cool. Like, I mean, it's been fun. Let me let me do a quick thing with um, Alien Nation. I mentioned I was going to do that. And I'll All do right. a... Let me just bring this up because alienation is something that a lot of people have forgotten about. And what I want to talk about is who created it as well as why it's such a great thing. Now, the creator of um, alienation is the same guy who did um, Bionic Woman. Oh. All right. So let me just um, bring this up. I'm not sure why it's doing its slowness there. The internet's the enemy. Yeah, I think we're because we've got about three different things juicing it up, um, taking over the um, supply here. Okay, so Alien Nation is basically um, about a ship that uh, it came out in 1988, and the TV series came out in 89. So there was a big movie, then after that they did the TV series, and um, there's some great characters. So here's what it's about. Okay, so in 19... 1988, Earth makes the first contact with an alien civilization. In 1991, these aliens, known as newcomers, slowly begin to, be, um, begin to be integrated into human society after three years of quarantine. Okay, so these newcomers are basically a ship full of slaves, uh, um, genetically engineered uh, slaves, uh, and they're servants to a master race, right, such and such. Um, the creator of that um, was Rockney S. Bannon, uh, and uh, talking about Terence Stamp. Terence mm, Stamp was it? James Khan. Again. That's a big day for Terence Stamp. Yeah, uh, General Zod. So it's it's such a such a good movie. If you want to have some watch something classic, it's worth watching. I remember and um, it. Mandy Patkin. Yeah, Mandy Patkin. Oh, I remember. Patnikin, Patnikin? Yeah, Pat, yeah. He's in um, the crime series. Oh, yes. Um, what yeah, is it? Criminal Minds. He's in uh, Homeland, Criminal Minds. Um, Damn. Uh, he's been in a whole bunch of stuff. Now, so, Rockney S. Bannon, let me just bring him up because he's really well, um, very well-known writer um, of sci-fi. Right, so... Born in 1955, he's, worked, he's done Farscape, Sequest 2032. Oh, that's good old Sequest. Right. Uh, Evil, or Evil's a new TV series. Uh, Defiance, developed by him. Constantine, uh, written by him, the first episode, the yeah. TV series. Um, Cult, V, this is the other thing. Oh, uh, that's uh, amazing how linked all these people yeah. are. So he did V. Uh, the Farscape, The Peacekeeper Wars, um, based on characters by him. Uh, Farscape, written by him. Invasion. Uh, let me just check here. Go further down. Twilight Zone. So he's he worked on. Um, he was a story editor on. Um, where are we? 
And Twilight yeah, it's the original Twilight Zone, not the rubbish that came out recently. Oh, see, that was a bit questionable. Yeah, it's like, what are you trying to do? I saw the first episode and I, I wanted to like it. I'm a fan of Twilight Zone. The no, old know. one and the recent one that was a few years back with um, uh, with the black uh, actor. Keen. No, the black Keen. actor. No. no, not this new guy. The um, the other guy who was hosting, um, I can't remember what. He was great. and But I first saw the first episode with the Indian guy and I was like, what is this trash? And didn't watch the race. So yeah, the comedian. And being Indian, I was like, yeah, this would be interesting to see what this guy's going to do. And it was trash. So, yeah, I didn't watch the rest of it. But, yeah, so Sequest 2032 was awesome. Did you enjoy that? Did you enjoy it? I, it had some funny yeah. moments. One of the ones that sticks out is about the gamers. Remember those two those, uh, um, kid and a girl, a guy and a girl who are in different sides of the country, um, city, and they're battling it out in suits? There's this one episode, and I think they... I missed an episode. Uh, oh, Mine was my... a giant crocodile. Do you remember that? It had a nest on the island. They found the eggs on this like, like uh, Hawaii Slightly. type island. There was big giant eggs. Like, what's this? What's going on? And there was a huge crocodile swimming around that was the size of their submarine. That could be like um... that was pretty crazy. But I that... always like these giant monsters. But then when you think yeah. about it, like the giant ants you're talking about, like how do they survive? Like it's kind of like how do they feed well, on enough? Like it's... well on. on... Um, um, yeah, so getting back to that one, the island of uh, giant, uh, giant insects, it's about oxygen. Yeah, so she's trying to explain it's about like how they've been, um, you know, you need oxygen to somehow, some bacteria, no, it's about bacteria, sorry, my bad. It's about bacteria and how it affects them and it's into their, it's um, like a, um, Jeez, we've got six on. Yeah, so oh, it's, it's. Thank you guys yeah. for joining us. So. It's, I think, yeah, she's talking about the bacteria and how it affects insects, and insects are surviving, and what they have to do to survive so they become smaller over time. But, yeah, so... Because insects don't have respiratory systems. They breathe through their skin. Yeah, so see, that's not something new that I've just learned. Didn't even know that. Cool. Then we'll go to you for science stuff. Um, I like insects. Yeah, um, I, I think... I think, like, just... Being mindful of creatures, you, you become uh, more aware of how things work in synergy, right? Um, okay, so yeah, so back to animation. It's got about six TV, uh, like six TV movies, the main movie and a TV show. Six TV movies. Yeah, I, I watched one movie of it. Yeah, that would have been the could have been the first the original, one. probably. Yeah. Yeah, but it's um. It's such a good show. So yeah, basically but they had a shanty town, didn't they? Yeah. So they basically it's like they live in a ghetto. Uh, they they die because of salt. Salt can kill them. Like totally meltdown. No fries. Yeah. And uh, what is it? There's something they eat that gets them high. So it's like a drug. Is it sugar that's a drug to them? Maybe that makes sense. Yeah. So it's like salt kills them and sugar's a drug to them. So <laughs> if you want to watch something good, classic, alienation is your thing. You, you'll really enjoy it, and you can't go wrong with the first movie, James Gunn. And the other thing is, they take the, there's some comedy in it as well, right? So they take names of cities as their names, because they don't, their language doesn't have names or such, because they're slaves, they're just numbers. And so it's a really interesting thing to watch, because I think it's, um, yeah, it's, it's, a good, it's a good topical thing. It came out in 1988. What is that like about? 22 years ago. No, 32 years ago. So maybe do now. Yeah, 32 years ago. So that's worth watching. The other thing, if you watched, um, let me see, Farscape. Did you like Farscape? Yeah, Farscape was good. Yeah, so, I mean, Farscape... They had the Australian chick, didn't that? The yeah. Black, yeah. And she was a badass, and she was a baddie, and then she turned good halfway. Exactly, and she was oh, great. On, so uh, I hope that? that's not a spoiler, but no, she was fantastic, and it? but it gave her a really Australian feel. <laughs> yeah, uh, didn't they film in Australia though? I think they must have. They had. I, I remember it as an Australian show. Mm. They, I just had that feel about. It. I think the main guy's American. Yeah, I mean, if and he was like that. I gave it a nine, like yeah, on IMDb. I gave it a nine because I thought it, it just became such a well developed arc it was of quite stories from and, memory. Yeah, and so Rockney has been the guy of um, um, Nation created that Claudia Black. 
Now, Claudia Black and Ben Browder were both brought into um, something like Star Stargate. Yeah, they were they were brought into Stargate, and in, um, I think was it the Universe or the next um, the TV series? Let me just grab it here. Yep, they were brought into SG One. Ah. Uh -huh. Yeah, and so and then they were also in uh, Stargate Continuum, and it did feel somewhat. Yeah, so I can see how they linked it through. He's also um so he's also been in um, Doctor Who, Bad Kids Go to Hell, um, his CSI and all that. But he's also was an Arrow, um, Call of Duty, <laughs> Call of Duty, the male player voice, right? Call yeah. of Duty Black Ops Three, that's our old favorite there. Okay, so did, while I'm thinking about the um, male player voice, um. Did you watch The Boys? Season one? Yeah. Yes. What do you think of it? <laughs> I really liked it. I yeah. didn't read the comics, but from what I read about what people felt about the comics, I could see that it came across well in the show. Yeah. They listened to the comic fans. They focused on the comics as they were, yeah. and they didn't shy away from kind of things that might come across distasteful that today yeah. may not, you know, be, be fly. Um, yeah. I hope they continue that way. It should. If, yeah, so if you really want to read a comic series about superheroes that are anti-superheroes and about superheroes that where no rules matter, they're not governed by any inhibitions. You know, I think they're just above. Yeah. They're above and they're there. It's kind of the God thing. It's like DC where they're gods, but it's like they're not gods, they're celebrities. It's yeah. like, oh, you do whatever. And right. they're created superheroes. So it's one of my one of my all time favorite sh sh series. There's about seventy five issues in the first series, plus there's about four or five mini series of six issues. It's uh, it's a very mature comic, so you can't give it to your kids, right? And uh, it's, it's a, for as far as I'm concerned, I would look at about sixteen plus for anyone to read it, even mm. maybe even R eighteen the comic. Yeah, books. but you got to think like when yeah. you're a kid and you're sixteen or even fifteen or whatever, if you're into comics. Sometimes you lean towards more. You're going. You're going to pick it up if you can. It's yeah. like when you read the aliens and predator comics, and you're a little kid. Yeah. You, you love it. You know, like sometimes yeah. you like to be shocked. You're but there is. Right. But fun. there are certain things in this uh, in the boy series, which is too which graphic, very graphic, which really leans into R18, and be mindful of that, right? So but if you're reading, you it, notice how the ratings drop down now. You know, yeah. like you, you can get away with a lot more, even though we're very sensitive about how it's done, <laughs> like. Talk about ratings. Mm. PG thirteen. You know how people say that, um, like Star Wars is for kids. The reason they say that is because they they want they, they, the they want the parents to come. It's got nothing to do with like being for adults or anything like that. It's not the structure anyway. PG thirteen is a thing where you want to grab as many people to watch something as, as because you want to make money. So, um, yeah, the ratings, the way that works in New Zealand, is, you know, it's M15, uh, R, and, it's some, and then goes R18, where it becomes very graphic. Um, and so, you know, with PG-13, you, 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 you have to be with a parent and so on. So, yeah, uh, getting back to that. So censorship, like, um, roundabout, going back to animation and stuff, and uh, we're on an Audi soon. It's funny how we've got a theme, like we've got yeah. the, the stamp, you know, Zod, yeah. Zod there, yeah. and then we've got censorship. We actually have a theme, it's crazy. Right. So, yeah, so the, like, Patreons basically, over the last year or two, have slowly been trying to, you know, go mainstream. And which means that all the people that are making the money, who were doing, like, mature adult stuff, are finding it hard because... They keep change. They keep moving the bar, right? Um, and the you know the sand. They keep changing the line of the sand, and um, and slowly you're going to find that a lot more people are going to leave Patreon, and more professionals will go well, to Patreon. I'd be interested though, but it's like Patreon. It, you've used it, yeah. But I mean, I I've looked at it. But I mean, how many New Zealanders use it? How many New Zealanders have been successful with Patreon? Like, I d I don't know if it's a thing that it really is. Maybe we just need our own thing here because I I don't see it as a New Zealand thing or something New Zealand. I know I know a few I know a few people can they do keep do, use it, but, but they, do they do well? The, is it something yeah. that is a success? Is Patreon like uh, a source of you know their 
lifestyle and funding their creativity, I, I, I have my doubts. I think some people do really well, and some people aren't. And I think, I mean, I found that, like, I mean, I wasn't doing anything. Because um, one thing is you gotta you got to have a name or you got to have art. you got to be able to do it every well, almost I mean, every other day the scale yeah and, and you got it's like being on youtube right you got to be able to do every, at least two three videos a day to keep in people's heads that you're here and content and I, when i was trying to start this up on youtube i was like i can't really do this every day because i'm busy doing art. i'm busy trying to run a comp um you know run um plunge i'm busy trying to keep everybody uh but it's patreon about aware. like Funding your broadcast, but I, to my understanding, yeah, it's, Patreon is it's like funding a monthly, an individual. Like you don't even have to do videos. I know you have to do. You can you can do um, music. I know there's a um, there's a Indian um, metal band called Bloody Wood. That's Bollywood with a, um, with blood in the start. You know Bloody Wood, and they do really well. You know they do covers of uh, American. Uh, you know popular. Um, music. So that's part of their service. To yeah, their and they do really well, so like they, uh, five thousand dollars a month. Well, but they yeah they have a special thing. They do the music, they do the CDs and all this stuff, but they also do it on YouTube. So it's a synergy. You got to make sure you do it everywhere, right? But that's kind of like just creating your own brand. And it's, things, a, so it's just a different port of call. But yeah. I thought on Patreon you could. Go, I'm studying to be an engineer. Will people get behind and support my engineering career? And maybe you can put up like projects you've worked on and share mm -hmm. information. But I thought that it was more that kind of angle of personal growth. Or if you're an artist and it's people want more... to fund the sculpture, yeah, you know, that... to, to do your, your, your sculptures for big galas and things. And you can go, I was, my patrons are blah and blah and blah. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's not that they need a direct result from you, is, yeah. is what I well, saw it as. The other thing is, like, it's like if you're doing a comic book, right, and each week you put a page up on there, uh, and then, you know, I'll put a panel Yeah, up. so that's like a thank you. Like, yeah. we've, we've got one page down, here you go, like, yeah. you can check or, it out early. Or people can commission you to do something. I know, I know, um, I've got a friend who actually uh, gets commissioned to do stuff. I mean, that's Patreon. the same as having a Deviant Art profile or having a website where someone goes, I'm a royal fan, or we do commissions yeah. for you yeah. if, you're, if you're a fan. But you're only really going to get the fans behind you. But that's the thing. See, on Patreon, you can do anything you want. And, and as long as you've got the, you know, this is my R18, this is, this is my thing, boom, it's fine. With Patreon, it's like, they don't, you know, even if you say it's R18, they don't care. So is it more similar to Kickstarter? So yeah, yeah, it's about a product. Yeah, it's about... yeah, but it's it's unlike Kickstarter, which is a product, and that's the product. That's it. Patreon's more like uh, this is me. This is Give me. me money. I'm doing a weekly thing. I'm gonna and re I'll I'll do reward based things like um you know I'll if commission me to a piece of work. Cool, here it is digital or not, or um or a actual physical copy, mm. or I'll put up something every day before. For the, our patrons before we put on the YouTube. Yeah, well, I mean, that's just another point yeah. of call. Like so it's... you're talking about branding. So yeah. this is what really what works. That you have to brand yourself. But then if you're already established, why bother? And this is where we go back to um, Rob Rob Rappel. Rappel. Yeah. Right? So <laughs> if, you're, if you're already established, you're well known, you've got freaking toys of your characters. You got and I don't, you know, and I love Rob Rappel, right? I'm not really anti this on this, but, I'm, but the question here is, if, he, if you're such a big person, why do you I, need yeah, to like jump I, on to the little person's thing? I understand Kickstarter more. Like, Brian Polito uses Kickstarter very well. He makes a lot of money, but he's producing a product and offering stuff. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't know. Patreon is interesting. I, I don't know how it fuels a, fuels a fire for people. As I thought it was yeah. about kind of giving people the opportunity to be creative. So That's say it. that in the in rock band, maybe right. they don't have the opportunity to yes. practice and jam. Maybe they don't have the equipment. Right. It's nice to give someone the opportunity. But if you've got the yep. opportunity and it's just selling mm. your product, then I yeah. think... What are you trying, a, yeah, what are you trying to say, right? If you're, if you're, if you're like, it's like, um, uh, let's see, uh, George Lucas suddenly goes, you know, I'm going to go into Patreon. Yeah, but like, what are you doing, George? Yeah, like you're already rich. You've already got a yeah. ranch. So like, if you're all, if you're all, and if you're already established, why do you need to go into somewhere where people are trying to get established? 
right? That's interesting. And I think it's a, it's a, it's it's kind of like a, I mean, I was like, oh, you know, okay, join the club, right? Because I I, I thought yeah. about it and I looked at it. And I thought it just doesn't make sense. Sure, if you get a lot of backers and support, great. But they're taking their piece, you know, like when you're when you're in a very low scale. But here's no that's right. Sense. So this is it. So if you if you're just starting out to be a, be a creator, uh, you know, doing a page a week, whatever, and here comes someone who's a multimillionaire wants a stipend of that same freaking market, you know, same banking. Mm. You, you shouldn't even think about it, really. I mean, as it much as seems, I like Rob, it seems to be trivial. Yeah, why would you even think about? Hey, I'm going to go start a Patreon page, or hey, I'm going to start a YouTube page as Kel Simone did, right? It's like no, like after years of like like hurling uh, dirt and crap and rubbish at at uh, creators, independent creators being on YouTube and What's doing the thing. What's wrong with them being on YouTube? Sorry. <clears throat> What's wrong with them being on YouTube? Yeah, but this is because um, my thing is, hey, they was hurling dirt at people on YouTube. But now they were like going directly to their people and talking to yeah, them. Yeah. Now Makes this is Gal Simone who's been like hurling all this dirt. Decides to start up her own, um, like this month, start up her own uh, YouTube page. What's she doing on there? Hey, I'm Bill Simone. I'm such and such. Exactly. What are you doing on there? Because you already have established <clears throat> thing. And this is what I mean. Like, if you already have your established niche market, why are you trying to spread yeah. yourself out to other people with who are actually getting created on their niche markets? Yeah, I mean, but YouTube is an advertising platform. So, mm. I mean, you've got something new coming up or you're saying... Yeah. I'm Aru, like, this is me, yeah. and I'm doing this, and why not, if someone's going to click if on it. If you're starting new coming up, but, no, but if you're already established. But even trailers and things, as advertising, as promotion, yeah. and I, I think, I, I felt Patreon was different. Maybe we yeah. need a different space for that. Yeah, and I think um, this is this is, what, this is where Pixiv, Pixiv, P-I-X-I-V, and N-I-G-I-E will come into effect, because if you really think about it, if if you got people like Rob Liefeld and probably any more people, professional people who are making millions or hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, decided to go step into Patreon, right? Which is for the little guy. You're just gonna. This this is why I think Patreon's doing this, is to push the you know the moment you know the big names come in, Patreon goes well. We need to clean up our act. But this is the these are the little guys who built you up. Yeah, well, maybe it's not that. Maybe sometimes in business, when they grow to a certain level, they get scrutinized at a different kind of rate. Yeah. You know, you go under a lens all of a sudden, you're like, oh, you're making a lot of money now. Yeah. Like, we better, like, check what you're doing. Oh, you got something that's a bit questionable, possibly. Yeah. Maybe we should. It may not be related. Um, yeah. But I think certainly I can't see the benefit of the bigger guys yeah. being on there. Um, but with the other platforms, I mean, it's about entertainment and getting your voice out. So being on Facebook, talking to people like Todd McFarlane, Rob Liefeld, yeah. Brian Polito, and many others, it's yeah. a wonderful thing. And when they're doing it freely, when they're giving advice, yeah. giving gifts so now, to their fans. So now you're going to go to Patreon and get paid to do it. It's like, like, what? Telling their fans, like, insights and, and kind things yeah. and responding to their fans. Yeah. That's a wonderful thing that creators do. Yeah. But now, even though you're established and you're rich and you're all that, now you want to go to Patreon and make money off. I just don't see. Ta a it's basically taking money out of the ind independent <laughs> creators. <laughs> but why would people but, pay them? Yeah, I I don't think people will. Because what I'm, what else can you tell us that we don't already know about twenty years of your history? I think it's like it's like pissing in the wind. Like it's I don't think it will go very far. I mean, yeah. maybe it's worth looking at because you can look at these people. <laughs> but I don't. I don't think he's gonna get a million. Yeah. It's the same thing with funding. Yeah. So why, why? Why would? It makes no sense. It's the same thing with Gus Moon. Why would you want to go to YouTube, where you basically crapped on people who are on YouTube already for the for the past decade, who have actually become established people who actually earn a living off it now, but now you, Gus Simone, basically now you're saying, oh, uh, you know what? I need to be on YouTube now because all those people who I've been crapping on. We're right. Well, <laughs> sometimes there could be management pressure there. Yeah. So they can go, hey, look, Jim Lee's been on social media and he's getting this good response yeah. and he's building a presence and he's done a lot for the business. Yeah. Gail, like, why why don't you like YouTube? And she yeah. can go, I don't like being on camera. I don't want to do it. Oh, go, she loves social media. No, but then, yeah, yeah, but you know, it could be that kind of angle yeah. where and they go, hey, look, you want to be in the business. You need to promote yourself a bit. Yeah. 
Uh, I, I kind of get it. I mean, yes, yeah. let's stop it's, throwing I think it's rocks. a bit too, yeah, it's a bit too late in the game to start saying, now people should pay me. Because yeah. you already established, like, it's it's like, uh, you know, it's well, like... I think people are paying, though. Yeah, but this is what's going to happen, is uh, people think that this is going to be something new that they're going to give, but there's nothing new they're going to give, yeah. because they've already got 20 years Patreons, of history. Patreons, like, you get a dollar a week or whatever, yeah. you can do, like, little but, things like that, less, perhaps. Yeah. And so I just don't see how that's going to be relative to Rob Liefeld. If he does get 10 supporters giving him a dollar each, yeah. and then he's charging $100 for a signature at comic conventions and having queues of people, isn't yeah. it? it is pointless. It is but pointless. But then the people that would give him money, if you thought about why is he charging me $100 for a scribble yeah. or a speech bubble, like, you know, it would make you not want to support them on Patreon, but you'd be like, he's making $500 for drawing yeah, a so simple speech bubble. Exactly. And this is this is the game, and like, and I think this is it's the same thing with the, you know the whole idea of Kickstarter getting unionized, right? So if they're getting unionized, that means that like there's certain things that you won't be able to publish now on Kickstarter because they'll say, well, this is not what we want on Kickstarter. This is what happens. So there'll be censorship on Kickstarter. It's already happened on Kickstarter censorship. So sometimes, so people when, you, who, when you see these things closing out, yeah. so say there's less opportunity for the edgy stuff on yeah. on Kickstarter and stuff. I mean, for the young entrepreneur, for someone thinking about it and going, oh, well, it's a shame they're missing out on a whole bunch of good stuff. Yeah. Maybe that's an opportunity to, you know, launch Quickstarter or Quickstarter X or, yeah. you know. Get away from that stuff. No, but it's an opportunity. So rather than being angry, we, oh, yeah. we yeah, could fully, create. So, yeah. I mean, if it did suddenly stifle the you know, yeah. people's message and their creativity and the ability to make something that's a little bit edgy or a little yeah. bit too much, which it could be a new platform. You know, it's a new opportunity yeah. for a new young person to which, what is You know, with DeviantArt, they do like a, like a um, they do something with a coffee, something like, I can't remember what it is. Uh, but like coffee, or like you can give them like so uh, cakes latte. and stuff, cakes and stuff. If you want, oh yeah, um, I've had a pretzel before. Yeah, so donkey. you can actually give people money on um, DeviantArt. So I guess DeviantArt would have would become more like Patreon in the sense of how they uh, manage their. Um... Let me see if I've got it here. I don't know. DeviantArt's very. Um... It's very edgy and always has been. Yeah, and, but they, and sometimes the normal stuff kind of edges out the edginess, but it's yeah. always there. You just have to like dig like <laughs> like one little bit, mm. and you'll get a lot of kind of edgy um, adult ish material. Yeah. I mean, I've been on Kicks. I mean, on, I mean, I've just returned in two thousand eighteen to Kickstarter, but I've been on there since about two thousand twelve. If I remember, two thousand seven. Kickstarter or DeviantArt? Uh, DeviantArt. Sorry. So I think DeviantArt. If DeviantArt goes into the whole. Um, concept of what patreon was doing that you become a patron of an artist right well there's a lot of creativity on there you see people's yeah. old creative life so on there, um, yeah so people cool. would basically i reckon the way to beat this whole patreon thing is to get off patreon and invite your pay on um, your patrons right people have supported you for years we support you monthly over to something like deviant art or this new stuff that's happening with pixiv and naiji right niji so yeah, I, I, I think this is this professionals coming on to like independent creators website is going to destroy the independent I and guess, take the money out of the little guy's pocket. Well, maybe it's competition. But, it's steep competition. Which means that you've got to be more creative on how you do things, right? Yeah, but I mean, when you look at it, I mean, it's just a, it's a forum. It's a, you know, yeah. So I mean, it's like anything. Like the strong survive, and you know, there's there's strong people who create stuff like. Walking Dead out of nowhere and, you know, run away yeah. and they, you know. And that's a big thing. Yeah. And, yeah, you know, they start everybody hates, humble beginnings. Yeah, now everybody hates zombies. It's like, like, it's like, it's, it's, yeah, it's like, it's, uh, it's They it's hate so... the flu. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's it. <laughs> like... Yeah. So, um. Should we do the wrap up? That's, let's do the wrap up. I think so, we, well, we're up to about. thank you everybody who is in the prize yeah. draw. We'll call out the unfortunate um, non-winners, but just to acknowledge the fact that you took the time to yeah. respond. Hey, um, Gray, thank you for joining us tonight. Um, we had other people join us on and off, and of course, um, we're gonna we're gonna leave this up here. But also, as you, um, if you um, remember, this is this goes like the live stream gets put back up onto YouTube, and sometimes I cut up the pieces. Um, which one of the ones we're gonna cut up is about this Patreon with. Lo Rob Liefeld and this YouTube thing with Bill Simone. I've got to see these cut versions. Uh, well, I, I didn't cut up last week's one, but this week I'm going to cut up that one because I think we did a good, um, good little um, spiel on that one. Um, 
yeah, thank you for joining us tonight, guys. And it's on my malfunction page, so on YouTube. Uh, follow me everywhere on that bloody name. Uh, that's why I put the one name down. So here's our uh, people okay. hanging so out. So we've got our five winners first. Sven, Daniel Cowan, Chantel, Acorn, and Craig Byrne. And so the unfortunate ones, but still in the draw, just to prove that, you know, we took the time to have a look and everyone was there. David Harris, thank you for responding to the poll. Kara Collins, thanks for taking part. Aaron Paul, thank you. Jeremy Wilson, thanks for being involved. And, and it's all made by the community. Like, we just want to be enjoying yeah. comics, enjoying our scene together. Yeah, our pop culture. Jake Morris, thank Stand you up. for taking the time and jumping on. Alex Latimer, thank you. Darren Edlington. Now, he suggested the uh, pants optional. Um, I didn't take part in that today, but maybe no. in a later episode, especially if um, cosplay babes come in. Yeah. Um, then we've got Paul I Fever. Do have a friend who, oh, I do have a friend who's actually going to be cosplaying in Creative Girl. I'm, I'm actually painting the costume myself and designing it myself, and she's going to wear it at the convention. Body so, painting. Yeah. No, no, actual costume, like a full body uh, costume. <laughs> and of course, Lancy. big Steve J. Hunter. So yeah, thanks guys. Thanks for uh, hanging out and watching. Last week we were quite surprised at the amount of people that actually watched some of the, what we did uh, on the stream. And um, of course you can watch it over the week and in your own time. And that's a cool thing about having a stream where you can, you know, watch a bit at a time. Yeah, we've got to make it more fun and things. Yeah. So this is a bit more involvement and hopefully it felt that way to you guys. Please mm -hmm. give thumbs up, thumbs down, unhappy faces, whatever. Let us know. Or the loves. I like the loves. I think loves are good. Loves? Loves. I take the loves. You have the laughs. Yeah, I like the laughs. laughs. I think it's fun. Uh, to be at this moment to enjoy life and laugh, watch a lot of comedy, lots of you know stand up and stuff like that. And we'll keep watch Police Academy. Go watch Police Academy and have a laugh. And if you want something serious, watch Alien Nation. Yeah, watch Alien Nation. Yeah, yeah. It. and Gen General Zod, Karen Stamp, right, and both of them. So the ultimate badass. Yeah. Kakitano. Right, Cheers, guys. Peeps. Malfunction. Rico. Catch you later. Yeah. Bye.